it's an unbelievable day here in Durham. It's about 70 degrees here early in the morning. We're here for the Stay Homecoming game. And what you're going to see is the 2017 rerun of our victory over URI, the Rams. Tough game, found a way to win it. The thing that was probably most exciting was all the fans that was here. It's the largest crowd in UNH football history. Picked us up in the second half. We got a big win out of the deal. Can't tell you how much it is to have our alumni, our supporters, our fans come back for homecoming. Do it again this year with Stay Homecoming. Do it again next year when we come back home. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the day. Summer is still in the air in Durham, New Hampshire. It is homecoming Saturday, and the New Hampshire Wildcats and Rhode Island Rams are looking to get back into CAA play and pick up a victory. It's a great day here for Wildcat Nation as they get ready for the tailgating scene. And this homecoming Saturday is full of fans from both universities. Tim O'Sullivan alongside Brendan Glasheen, Jackie Mundry will join us on the sidelines today. Tim, you've covered the CAA for 13 years. Homecoming, a great site here in Durham. Yeah, it's great to be here with you, Brendan, and it's great to be here with all these people in Durham. Last year, we had more than 20,000 people in Durham for this game. Wildcats have won eight straight homecoming games, and you know what? Even when it's not homecoming, UNH is really tough in this place. They're 52 and eight. Uh, at this very at this very spot uh, since 2007, so it's going to be a big task for URI today. And one man that has been a problem for UNH defensively, Harold Cooper, all-purpose yardage, second best in the conference. He is a very versatile running back. He's been a problem for everybody, and Cooper not only uh, is second best in all-purpose yards, he's fourth in the conference in rushing yards, uh, with, and he's almost at 2,000 for his career. So, uh, you know, UNH had a hard time tackling last week. Cooper's a really hard guy to tackle, and UNH also had some problems with their kickoff coverage. Uh, and Cooper is, you know, that's where he's gotten half of those all-purpose yards, almost 1,500 uh, kick return yards. So he's a tough guy to bring down, and you know he's he's going to have to. The UNH defense is going to be half to focused on him. And you know, it's a guy that touches the ball a lot, but his most touches ever came in 2015 against UNH. Defensive end Jaywan Horton, a junior from Stafford, Virginia. Three and a half tackles for a loss on the season. Nine total tackles against Holy Cross, Tim, last week. That was a team high. He's an anchor for this defensive line. No question about it. And this is a line that's going to have to get pressure on URI quarterback Tyler Harris. He's a big guy. He can sling it. We know that Rhode Island wants to put the ball in the air. And uh, Horton is a guy that can bring that pressure. We will come back for more pregame coverage, starting lineups, and we'll highlight both quarterbacks in action today at Wildcat Stadium in Durham. It's number 16, New Hampshire and Rhode Island, a CAA battle coming up next on ESPN. With DD Perks, you get upgrades like speeding past the line with on-the-go ordering and a free beverage when you join. And that upgrade feeling really stays with you. Upgrade. Because with DD Perks, you can keep moving. Upgrade. And stop waiting. The more points you earn, the more free beverages you get. Upgrade. And free always feels good. Experience the upgrade effect with DD Perks. Download the Duncan app and enroll today. Unifirst handles the ongoing year-in and year-out details of all that goes into uniform program management. Quick and accurate delivery, bottom line value, and unparalleled service and customer satisfaction. All designed to empower you and your employees to project the best business image possible. Hi, I'm Tim Wakefield. As a two-time world champion, I know a great team when I see one. That's why I'm excited to announce that Wentworth Douglas Hospital has joined the Massachusetts General Hospital family. Together, these award-winning hospitals will deliver a broader range of services, offering you and your loved ones access to some of the world's best medical expertise and care right here on the seacoast. Wentworth Douglas and Mass General, two award-winning hospitals, one great team, because two champions are better than one. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. 
This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources, empowering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. Gorgeous day in Durham, New Hampshire. Time for some football. Second home game of the season for New Hampshire. They've won eight consecutive homecoming games, and they've won six straight against the Rams of Rhode Island. We'll go down to Jackie Mundry, who now joins us on the sidelines for keys to the game. The Wildcats haven't suffered a back-to-back -back loss since 2014, and in order for them to continue that trend, they'll have to, the offensive line will have to protect Trevor Knight and give him more time in the pocket. But Rhode Island will have to move the ball downfield on their offense using their running backs like TJ Anderson and Harold Cooper. Jackie, thanks so much. And one note, Tim, that we should make note of, Matt Messia, offensive lineman, number 70 for UNH, is out for today. So that could affect the pass protection of Trevor Knight. No question, and that's been an issue already this season for the Wildcats. Kickoff underway, and the ball loose on the field at the 25. New Hampshire players were pointing uh, to the right side, thinking they had it. So URI won the toss and decided to receive. So it will be Tyler Harris, a quarterback, to start out in this run-pass option. You might get a review oh, of some sort. Well, kick, a kickoff fumble played a key role in last week's New Hampshire game against Holy Cross. Interesting that we start this one with a similar thing, but it looks like no review. Rhode Island is just going to get ready and play. New Hampshire lines up in a 5-4-2-4 defense, 4-2-5. Harris in the gun, 4 wide. The give to Cooper, just short of the first down. Cooper has been an animal, Tim, this season. All-purpose yardage, seven straight games of at least 100. Cooper's not a big guy, five foot nine, 187 pounds, but he is not afraid to go up the middle. You know, he likes to get outside, and he's great in space. But don't be surprised to see him run behind this very big offensive line for Rhode Island. To pick up a five for Cooper. Harris, play action, looking for his man over the right, Marvin Bouvet. We already see, we, we know that New Hampshire is going to be focused on Cooper, so that play action should open things up a little bit for Rhode Island. We know that's what Coach Fleming is hoping there, but some good pressure from Quinlan Dean to force that pass from Harris. Harris, 48 of 91 on the year, eight interceptions. He threw six in the opener against Central Michigan, though head coach Jim Fleming said only half of those were really his fault. But a slinger, no doubt, a former four-star recruit, transfer from UCF. He's back to throw, using the bubble to Cooper. Brought down by Perkins, and then just after that, Cooper whisked away. Was he down, though? Might have been just short. Brings up fourth down. Yeah, I think either way, he's short of the first down, and it was a good reaction to that play by the New Hampshire defense. They saw that screen coming. The tackling was a little bit suspect, and that was a problem last week for the Wildcats against Holy Cross as well. So, you know, good job to get the three and out, but probably want better tackling from the Wildcats as we move forward. Isaiah Perkins did drag down Cooper by the leg. The punt from Satchel Denton, a freshman from Sparta, Ohio. High in the air for Evan Horn, the redshirt freshman, wrestled down at the 21. Great punt right there by Denton, and he's been impressive in this true freshman season. A couple of true freshman kickers for Rhode Island, but Satchel Denton has done a great job with directing his punts, you know, pinning opponents inside the 20, and that one just getting enough hang time so his coverage team could get down there and make the tackle on Horn. Just underway in Durham. That'll bring out Trevor Knight and the New Hampshire offense. Native of Amherst, New Hampshire. Played his high school football at Nashua South, about 11 miles from Amherst. Knight the junior in his second year starting. The give is to Evan Gray. And he's backed up by this lethal URI defensive line. Gray just a sophomore from Centerville, Virginia. And one key today, Tim, for Sean McDonald, the head coach, get the ground game going 
not a great day for the two men that lead this cause, Goodrich and Gray. Last week against Holy Cross, they struggled. They want to get that ground game going, so Rhode Island can't just focus on the passing game in Trevor Knight. They need a little protection from Knight, and you can do that by running the ball. Knight looking to throw, and he hits his man on the left side. That's Neil O'Connor, who just got his feet inbounds. Saw a great catch out there by O'Connor. Has really come into his own. He was a preseason all-conference selection this year. Really kind of had a breakout season last year as a sophomore. Kid from Lemonster, Mass. And who had proved a lot, shown a lot to a lot of people in this league. 23 receptions on the season for O'Connor. Second best in the conference. Bunch formation wide. There's a man in motion. It's Gray in the gun with Knight. Mishandled the snap. Takes off and he rushes out of bounds to pick up the first. So we should mention it looks like Nick Velty Jr. is in at guard for Masha, who was out, ruled out just before the game. But Velty was a player who was injured on the very first play of this first offensive play of the season for UNH. One of the few linemen coming back with some experience. So you lose Masha, but you get Velty back. So maybe it's actually it might could be an upgrade for the Wildcats along that O line. Velty five starts a season ago, an offensive line that lost four of its five starters. New Hampshire. On first and ten, Goodrich, the senior captain, plowed back behind the line of scrimmage. So already we've seen UNH use two running backs, Gray and Goodrich. They have four guys that they'll play. A redshirt freshman, Deontay Chapman, really kind of had a breakout game last week. Uh, Jerickson Frederick, who was a transfer from Maine, is the other guy. Probably won't. Gray may get the most carries, but we're going to see a lot of different people touch the ball for New Hampshire today. The stop on the play, Jose Duncan, the leading sacker in the CAA. Four sacks on the season for Duncan, a senior from Brooklyn. Knight back to throw, play action. Running out of time. Knight will throw it away. And that'll bring up third and nine for the Wildcats. That's one of those you have to give a lot of credit to the Rhode Island secondary. They were able to hang with the New Hampshire receivers for a pretty long time as Knight bought himself time back there in the pocket. This is a good defensive backfield for Rhode Island. It definitely improved from last year, getting some, some nice contributions. Just 11 total yards for New Hampshire, seven for Rhode Island. Knight passed for his second 300-yard game against Holy Cross last week. Back to throw on third and nine. Intended for love, incomplete. And the coverage on the play by Mamadou Mbai, the redshirt sophomore right corner for the Rams. Mbai is one of those guys who has kind of risen up this year for Rhode Island. He was just a walk on to begin his uh, career, his college career. He earned a scholarship after last season and he's really kind of come into his own, leads the team in pass breakups. So impressive play right there by Mbai and it's what we expected coming into this game. His fourth pass breakup of 2017. Max Pendoff ready to lift this one off. And the fair catch called by Ivory Frimpong. Football drops out of bounds. 11-10 to go in the first. And it will be Tyler Harris in the Rhode Island offense when we return. Wildcat Stadium, the site of this CAA battle. Number 16, New Hampshire and Rhode Island scoreless. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources and powering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. With DD Perks, you get upgrades like speeding past the line with on-the-go ordering and a free beverage when you join. And that upgrade feeling really stays with you. Upgrade. Because with DD Perks, you can keep moving. Upgrade. And stop waiting. The more points you earn, the more free beverages you get. Upgrade. And free always feels good. Experience the upgrade effect with DD Perks. Download the Duncan app and enroll today. Universe handles the ongoing year in and year out details of all that goes into uniform program management. 
quick and accurate delivery, bottom line value, and unparalleled service and customer satisfaction. All designed to empower you and your employees to project the best business image possible. Hi, I'm Tim Wakefield. As a two-time world champion, I know a great team when I see one. That's why I'm excited to announce that Wentworth Douglas Hospital has joined the Massachusetts General Hospital family. Together, these award-winning hospitals will deliver a broader range of services, offering you and your loved ones access to some of the world's best medical expertise and care, right here on the seacoast. Wentworth Douglas and Mass General, two award-winning hospitals, one great team, because two champions are better than one. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Durham. Temperatures in the 80s, even though the calendar has flipped to fall. An offensive drive each for each team. Ball back to Rhode Island. And a fake bubble screen out to Aaron. And he bursts for a long run. Nice run right there by Cooper. Neither team really did much on those opening drives, and it's kind of what we expected coming into this one. Both defenses have played pretty well. UNH, despite giving up the 51 points last week to Holy Cross, their defense played great in the first two games, and URI was awesome last week on defense against Harvard, not allowing any points in the second half. An 11-yard burst. That's actually the backup, T.J. Anderson, a senior, a former quarterback in high school. Harris back to throw. It's a screen to Parker, but he dropped it. Parker is a weapon. They use him in the bubble, and they also go along with him. Big target, a lot of big targets for Harris. You were loaded with tall, rangy, wide receivers. Smart to try to get Parker the ball out there in open space, let him see if he can break some tackles. And speaking of big plays that Sean McDonald doesn't want happening on his defense, last year Parker just two receptions but 82 yards. That was in Kingston, Rhode Island, home of the Rams. Harris to throw on second down, the screen the other way to Harold Buckner. He didn't have a catch in the Harvard game but did play on a couple of snaps. Buckner is senior from Roanoke, Virginia. Good job over there by New Hampshire cornerback Prince Smith Jr. coming off the block and able to kind of guide Buckner out of bounds. First two completions for Harris. Technically a redshirt junior, still has two years of eligibility left with URI. And it brings up third down and seven. Rhode Island converting just 39% of the time on third down. Harris in the gun with three receivers. Cooper breaks out. Harris over the middle, a sliding catch. That was Tyler Burke, tight end. Just his first reception of the season, a transfer from Maryland, but well short of the first, and the Rams have to punt. UNH defensive coordinator John Lyons dialed up the blitz on that third down, sent the linebacker and a safety. It was the safety, Evan Horn, who got in there to pressure Harris, and now Horn drops back as the deep man looking to return this punt. Second punt of the day from Satchel Denton. This is a huge hole for New Hampshire. They tried to fill during the offseason. Remember Dalton Crossan, who was picked up as an undrafted free agent by the Indianapolis Colts. Also Casey DeAndrade, a former all-conference defensive back. They let the punt fall. Football's still loose in front of the end zone. And it is indeed a touchback. We'll step aside, 9.20 left in the first, and New Hampshire takes over on offense. We're scoreless in Durham. Tonight in New Hampshire's offense, back out on the field for drive number two, number 16, New Hampshire, and unranked Rhode Island. A battle in the CAA, still scoreless. And they give up the middle to Goldrich. Goodrich, pardon me, the running back. You can see New Hampshire dedicated to trying to get that running game going, at least to make Rhode Island believe, you know, have the threat of a running attack. He's Tim O'Sullivan, Brendan Glasheen alongside. We have Jackie Mundry on the sidelines. Tim has covered the CAA for 13 years. Knight will spread him out in this spread offense. Got the read option as well. Knight to throw, scrambles. Looking for time, he heaves over the middle and it's caught. Donovan reels it in. I liked about that play from Knight was that he was calm in the pocket. He stayed there for a little while, took his time, waited for his receivers. Finally, when there was the rush, he got outside and that 
completed the pass. Now he gets his team right up to the line as we see this UNH hurry up offense go to work. Brings it up to the 45. The give is to Evan Gray, wrestling through tacklers up the gut. And he'll get into Rhode Island territory. Oh, as Gray, they're looking to get him going. Eight carries, 11 yards last week against Holy Cross. Yeah, as this season has gone along, it, it looks like Evan Gray may emerge as the lead back. Coach Mack, from the very beginning of this season, Coach Sean McDonald from New Hampshire, said we've got four guys who can run the ball. But as we've gone along here, it looks like Gray is starting to kind of separate himself from that pack of four. Number one in blue, Malik Love in the slot. Donovan, the far side receiver. Man at the bottom of your screen, O'Connor. The fake give. Knight going deep. And he just lost his man, but here comes the flag. Donovan, the intended receiver, and the man punished in Rhode Island's secondary, Ezra Holmes. Looked like Holmes just kind of lost where he was in space. I don't. I think that ball was going to be uncatchable. I don't. I think it still has to be called a pass interference, but it just sort of both guys just kind of got lost in space. Just ran right into the back of Donovan. Trevor Knight not afraid to take shots down the field. As a matter of fact, he loves it. He loves to look for the big play. It was one thing they've had to work on him a little bit here in New Hampshire. Did not always go for the play, big play, take the check down. That was the right decision right there. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and the Wildcats get rewarded with the big penalty. That was Kadir Brown, redshirt freshman from Patterson, New Jersey. So a freshman making a big mistake on this young Rams defense. So first and 10, New Hampshire at the 30. Empty backfield for Knight. Over the middle, hits Love. Another big pickup, and Malik Love nursing a hamstring injury. Got back in action against Holy Cross last week, but his role should increase gradually as the season goes on. As good as Neil O'Connor is, Malik Love was the best receiver in camp this year for New Hampshire. Got dinged up towards the end of camp. Uh, and has been kind of slowly working his way back in, like you said, Brendan. But he is a huge weapon with O'Connor, Love, and Rory Donovan. It's a, really a trio of uh, pretty big weapons for Trevor Knight. Speaking of the trio, all lined up on the near sideline. Knight backpedaling, a dump over the middle, incomplete. That was intended for Goodrich, the two-time captain, the running back for the Wildcats. He'll leave the field. Goodrich from nearby York, Maine, went to Chevrolet High School in Portland, Maine, was the Fitzpatrick Award winner up there as the top high school player in Maine. Decided to come to uh, rival New Hampshire for his college football. He's never been a star in this program for Sean McDonald, but certainly a heartbeat guy, the man in the locker room getting that captain nod. Too deep, the give to Gray, sophomore running back, a flag comes in from behind after Gray twirled for a couple. And we'll get the ruling. It is holding against New Hampshire's offensive line. The right tackle, Will McHenry. Yeah, again, we see that dedication to the running game early on. The Wildcats lined up in a tight formation. Usually kind of an unusual look for them. They usually like to spread it out, but they lined up tight, said we're going to run it, and then they did. And unfortunately for them, got called for a holding penalty. Yeah, New Hampshire, 166 yards of rushing against Holy Cross last week, but a bit misleading. Dante Chapman went for 107 in garbage time when the team trailed by more than three scores. So third down and 11. Knight on the low snap. Steps up, fires left, there's Love. Toe touches and tight ropes the sideline for another New Hampshire first down. And you saw over there on that side, both O'Connor and Love, and it was a nice combination of routes. Uh, O'Connor cut his off early. Love went a little bit deeper, created some space over there on the sideline. Wasn't a big window, but Trevor Knight put it in there, put it in there with some touch. And again, saw a nice footwork by Love on the sideline. 24 yards receiving already for number one, Malik Love. Missed the Georgia Southern game with an hamstring injury. Knight going to the end zone. Donovan goes up, did he get it? No, incomplete says the official in the back of the end zone. Donovan slow getting up. There's Mamadou Mbai back there. He, once again, we've already talked about Mbai today. He did a great job defending him. Donovan really didn't have a chance to protect himself as he went down. He was trying to make that catch. Made it right on his back. Maybe just got the wind knocked out of him. 
Donovan coming off a career high 11 receptions, his first 100 yard receiving game, the junior from Canton. And will step aside with the man down on the field. So here's another look. The fake give, a great block by Gray to give Trevor Knight some time. And you give the 6'5 uh, frame a chance to leap up. They love to throw, they love to the jump ball to Donovan in the end zone, and why not? I mean, or anywhere on the field, he's got that height. You might as well try to use it. I'm glad you saw that block, Brendan. I noticed it live. It was a great block by Gray, and hey, that's one of the ways you're gonna make yourself stand out from the pack of running backs, right? It's not just being able to run the ball, especially in an offense like this. You need to do a little bit of everything. You need to be able to pass protect. And Rhode Island came with a heavy blitz right there on that play. And it was really a great job by all the offensive line and the back we saw in gray. And that's, you know, a key for New Hampshire. Can they keep Trevor Knight safe? Can they give him time? When he has time, he's got a great arm. And he's really developed a nice kind of feel for the game uh, from what we saw last year. So Donovan off the field. Looks like we're going to get ready to play pretty soon here. Worthy of noting, Nick Lorden, a redshirt freshman. He is out today for New Hampshire. So other men in the arsenal, Brandon Gallagher, a sophomore, and Nick Lubersher, a sophomore, who also have opportunities to get in the game. Well, that's what they were wondering about. They knew they had those three big receivers in love, O'Connor and Donovan. But who was going to be the other guys? Who were going to be the other guys to step up and fill the void if they needed somebody to come in with an injury or when they want to run four wides or five wides? And nobody's really stepped up from that crowd. Lorden is another guy actually played his high school football in Nashua, New Hampshire. He went to Bishop Girton High School, mm -hmm. a private school there. And, you know, he's somebody they were really looking forward to. He already has a touchdown on the young season, but he has had a lot of health injuries. He couldn't stay healthy all of camp. So it's unfortunate for Lord and once again, kind of battling those uh, injury issues. Brandon Gallagher started the Georgia Southern game, but no receptions. And Nick Lubisher has been named the new long snapper for UNH. Neither has a reception on the season. As for URI's defense, they are clearly testing this younger secondary. It's a string of sophomores and juniors, and the man they're attacking early is Mamadou Mbaye, who's had one of their best seasons as far as pass breakups as well as fumbles forced. Yeah, you might want to be careful uh, testing Mbaye too much out there. <laughs> he's, he's had a pretty good season, and he's looked great so far in the couple of times they have tested him. You know, we saw URI come with the blitz. They haven't. Oh, they're calling it a touchdown. Unbelievable. I, you know, I didn't think that's what they were looking at, Brendan. Well, Donovan is on his feet. He takes the helmet off on the sideline, and he is roaring in excitement. And that foot is down, I it looks like he, got he did get it in. that one foot down. Yeah, on great catch by Rory Donovan. Uh, yeah, apparently, he's healthy because he's celebrating over there on the sidelines, jumping up and bumping shoulders. It's a 17-yard strike. Knight going for two. He got in there. It's a classic Coach McDonald move right there. He loves to go for two after the first touchdown of the game. And he, and he does a, they do a great job with various formations and, and giving Trevor Knight the opportunity to say either, hey, we're going to go for two right Extra point. Third touchdown of the season for Donovan. We will step aside. It's 8 nothing New Hampshire on top of the Rams of Rhode Island. Unifirst handles the ongoing year-in and year-out details of all that goes into uniform program management. Quick and accurate delivery, bottom line value, and unparalleled service and customer satisfaction. All designed to empower you and your employees to project the best business image possible. Hi, I'm Tim Wakefield. As a two-time world champion, I know a great team when I see one. That's why I'm excited to announce that Wentworth Douglas Hospital has joined the Massachusetts General Hospital family. Together, these award-winning hospitals will deliver a broader range of services, offering you and your loved ones access to some of the world's best medical expertise and care, right here on the seacoast. Wentworth Douglas and Mass General, two award-winning hospitals, one great team, because two champions are better than one. The power of local, it's the faces that make us smile and the places we love to go, the businesses that make us special, the things that make us proud, and the needs we can't ignore. The power of local, 
is making our own decisions, knowing the back way home, and finding a new way forward. It gives us our character and energy and makes us better every day we're here. Kenny Bunk Savings, the power of local. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources and powering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. Number 16, New Hampshire has struck first. This play was reviewed. Trevor Knight to the big 6'5 receiver. Donovan, Rory Donovan, the junior from Canton, Mass. Got that bottom foot down for his third TD of the season. Rams came with a full blitz on that play, and it's something they haven't done a lot this season. Teams have liked to blitz UNH, trying to attack that young offensive line, so we'll have to follow that storyline as the game goes on. Elman, the kickoff. <laughs> Cooper boosting forward. He just gets above the 25. And you can see why Cooper has uh, so many kickoff return yards. Didn't look like there was a lot there. It even looked like Cooper was going full speed, but kind of was weaving in and out of traffic and found his way down close to the 30-yard line, giving the Rams some decent field position to start this drive, see if they can answer the opening touchdown from UNH. Cooper comes into play 87 yards away from ninth most all-purpose yards in Rhode Island program history. It's Tyler Harris, the redshirt junior, transfer out of Central Florida in the gun at the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at the 29. They give to Cooper. Shimmy shakes a bit between the hash marks. And a small pickup brought down at the last moment by Rick Holt, a senior defensive lineman from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, not far down the road. No, right next door, as a matter of fact, Rick Holt coming on in his senior year. Two returning starters, a defensive tackle for UNH, Holt and Ryan Sosnak. Great foundation for that defensive line of the Wildcats. Yeah, Holt and Sosnak, the anchors, 71 and 72 of that New Hampshire front seven. Harris will throw. He hits Parker. He can take off, but he's brought down at the very last second. Well done by Evan Horn, the roving back for New Hampshire. Parker right there used his size really to kind of fend off the cornerback who was trying to cover him on that play. It was Alonzo a die in there. It's like giving Prince Smith Jr. a little break. Adai has seen some action, but you could just see he was backing off Parker, respecting that deep threat. That's a 15-yard pickup for Harris and the Rams offense. Too wide, it's Bouvet and Kyrie Denny. Harris back to throw. He can sling it, but this one incomplete. Intended for Isaiah Coulter. Freshman from Brandywine, Maryland. He's actually cousins with Aaron Parker. Both attended Gwynn Park High School. But they did not cross over, as it turns out. Coulter was a senior at Gwynn Park High School in Brandywine, Maryland. Aaron Parker, a freshman at Rhode Island. That kind of funny two guys, cousins who went to the same high school, never played there, but now playing college ball together. Sure, that makes their family happy. Play clock was at 9, second and 10, and they give to the backup T.J. Anderson. And he lifts this offense up. Like Quinlan Dean there, middle linebacker for UNH, making the tackle. We should mention Jared Keel, the other linebacker in UNH's 4-2-5 scheme, is out today. He's on the sideline, not in pads, is dealing with an in, a knee injury he suffered against Georgia Southern. That's a key loss for New Hampshire. Keel, one of the leaders, a really physical, smart football player right in the middle of this defense where UNH has had a lot of really good linebackers. Third down and five. Michael Balsamo has been a great replacement for Keel in the middle of that defense. Harris looking for room. Throws over the middle, and it's caught by Frimpong. Nope, he dropped it. Another freshman target for the Rams. And incomplete, brings up fourth down and five. And it was that guy we talked about in the opening, Jaywan Horton, applying the pressure to Harris. 
getting in there, forcing that throw a little bit low. May probably one that Harris wants his receiver to come up with. Quinlan Dean in coverage again. As Tim just highlighted a moment ago, coming up on four minutes left, first quarter. New Hampshire, a touchdown, a 17-yard strike. Trevor Knight to Rory Donovan. Denton, the punter. And it will just be a fair catch out of Evan Horn. Well, Brendan, you mentioned it last time. UNH had to replace a lot in the kick return department. Dalton Cross and Casey DeAndre handled all of those duties last year. On the last punt from URI, we saw Evan Horn let one go that he really should have caught. Rhode Island kind of blew it. They had an opportunity to down the ball inside the five. This time, the ball was pretty much right at the same place. Another very good punt by Denton. And this time, Evan Horn learned. So there you go. The young guy getting his chance back there, trying to fill some big shoes. He improved from one punt to the next. I know that will make Coach McDonald happy. He's a big special teams guy. He's in charge of the special teams here at UNH. <laughs> so we see Evan Horn growing up right before our eyes. New Hampshire's offense has accumulated 86 yards. And they're back out on the field. Knight, play action. Zips it near side, guess who? Donovan back on the field, a good sign for the Wildcats. Yeah, I think he probably just got the wind knocked out of him after that one. Again, that was in front of him by, but I tell you what, they were double covering everybody else all over the field. Donovan was the only one with single coverage. The protection lasted long enough that he was able to get open and Nate, uh, Knight was able to find him. So hard to fault him by on that one. Just had they're, to stay in coverage for too long. Yeah, they're really exploiting number 28 in white. Three receivers set, Knight in the pistol with Gray behind. Quick throw over the middle. And a new man in action for New Hampshire. Justin, Justin Malone Woods, the tight end. You got it, you got it right there. We maybe had a look for that number. He's only had one catch on the year so far, as you, we were talking about before the game, and there he is. But they really like this kid here. He's a good pass catcher. That, he's kind of that more that pass catching tight end, not necessarily a blocker, but we saw some good hands right there. Pretty hot ball coming out of Knight's hands. First reception by a New Hampshire tight end since the opener against Maine. This time it's Neil O'Connor. He'll wrestle for a couple more. And another New Hampshire first down. You can see Knight starting to find a little bit of rhythm, but we also saw the physicality of the Rhode Island defense on the end of that play. I know it's a New Hampshire first down, but it's impressive all the Rams kind of rallying to the ball. You see three, four guys there on the tackle looking to make that extra hit, looking to punish receivers when they get down the field. Four different players with a reception for the Wildcats. Drop off to Gray, plenty of room. Gets a big tackle, roaming to the outside. Gray out of bounds. Another long, deceiving play by Trevor Knight in New Hampshire's offense. I think that it's the second time they tried to set up a, a screen pass down in the red zone earlier. Didn't work on that one, but obviously they've seen something. You know what else we've seen a lot? We've seen a lot of Trevor Knight looking one way and then quickly looking back the other. I, they, New Hampshire must have scouted that you know, Rhode Island likes to read the quarterback's eyes, so Trevor's trying to move the defense around with his head. It's good for 20 yards for Gray, and a key to that play, Nick Velty, who's starting today on offensive line, got that late block to open up some room. Knight will keep it on the move, working middle, just short of the marker. And he got brought down by, it looked like on the play, Mike Ezerike, captain, redshirt senior. He was on campus before Jim Fleming became the head coach of URI. <laughs> and it was URI's other big defensive guy on that line, Jose Duncan put the pressure on Knight, forced him out of the pocket. A nice job by Jose. He's had an awesome season so far, but man, Trevor is tough to corral. His mobility, a pain in the tail, as Jim Fleming put it. He wants to keep it again. Secondary comes up to make the stop. Looks like he's, Knight is pretty close to a first down out there. Jose Duncan looked a little shaken up after that, after the play two plays ago. He's, he's staying out there. I think he had, Duncan has started 23 straight games for Rhode Island, which is really remarkable for a defensive lineman to be that durable. Says a lot about his character, about, a lot about the work he puts in. 24th consecutive start leads all active Rams. Kadir Brown had the stop on night. He did get enough for the first. Shovels it off to Malik Love. And Miles Ross comes out of the Secondary, he's the strong safety in this 4-3-4 look 
to make the stop on Love, a broken play. Nice job right there by the Rams, not getting fooled by any of the mis misdirection that the Wildcats were using there. They brought a player in motion to the left, kind of faked it to him, came back with the option to the right. Rams stayed home, didn't get fooled. Assignment football, you have to do that against this New Hampshire team when they go into that option run look. Jim Fleming, the head coach of URI in year four, is sort of in awe of how they use Knight and the running backs in the passing game as well as this lethal run game. Didn't look good last week. Knight gives to Evan Gray once more, the sophomore, weaving forward. It was Mbai coming up a little run support there for the Rhode Island defense, as well as Hakima Evans in on the tackle. Now, one thing's for certain, Sean McDonald critical of his team based on the performance against Holy Cross. I mean, a guy like Gray, a great example, 77 yards on the ground against an FBS school in Georgia Southern. Certainly expecting a little bit more out of these guys. I really First quarter is in the books. We'll get on to, into that when we come back. It's eight to nothing, New Hampshire, on homecoming weekend in Durham, New Hampshire. Coming Saturday, New Hampshire taking advantage of its home field ahead 8-0. Trevor Knight using the run game, Tim, getting Evan Gray involved. That's led a 9-for-12 start for Knight through the air. He's getting his feet settled, he's relaxing, and he's also taking off, getting positive yardage for New Hampshire's offense. Evan Gray has been the leading rusher for this team through the first three games. We see him kind of establishing himself as the lead back, and you know that could only help this offense. It's nice to have the depth when you, when you get a guy who can get that rhythm, find that rhythm that it looks like Evan already has in this game. Really opens up a lot of stuff for the offense to be able to do, and we're seeing it. You know, like you said, great first quarter for Knight, nine for twelve. I'm gonna go for it on fourth down right here. It is fourth and one. New Hampshire already leading. The offensive coordinator, Ryan Cardi, is in the booth next door. You can hear the window banging here in the new press box. The give. Did Rhode Island get the stop? No ruling just yet. Now, it looks to me like Evan Gray is definitely short, and Rhode Island must have noticed the same thing that we noticed up here, Brendan. Evan Gray was getting too much of a rhythm. They probably read, knew that was coming out, and that physical Rhode Island defensive line. It's what has been the kind of the linchpin for this defense for the Rams through the first three games of the season. It really came up huge right there. Needed to stop. It looked to me like it was Ezerike again leading the charge. The big defensive tackle, redshirt senior, 287 pounds. And, you know, they were ready for that. Coach Cardi next door to us here, the UNH offense coordinator, wanted his team to get set up sooner. Not exactly sure why, but they were on the ball quick enough for Coach Cardi. Ezerike, a captain from Laurel, Maryland. Jim Fleming, the head coach, very appreciative of his leadership building into his fourth se season as the head coach. As Arike was on campus before he arrived. Harris over the middle. That is Parker, who bursts for some extra yards after the catch. URI, a first down. That is just their third of the afternoon. Rams came out with a four wide receiver set right there. Maybe they're looking to spread things out against this New Hampshire defense. Let, let Tyler Harris go to work. Let the big guy sling it around. Harris five for nine. 17 yards to Parker. He's got 38 yards through the air. A delayed snap. You could tell something went wrong. A free. And Bouvet goes up to get it. Might have been a false start on URI. The tight end, number 30, Joey Kenny. He pleads that. It was a New Hampshire player that jumped. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was going to be encroachment on New Hampshire. I, I believe that Harris got Brian Carter, 99, the defensive end, to jump, and that's what it was. And look, a smart play by Harris, right? He knows he has the free play. Why not throw it downfield a little bit? Nobody was running really deep routes, but he threw it to the guy who was running the deepest. Nice pickup for the Rams. Bouvet, his first catch today. 13th of the season, a redshirt junior, a local product for Rhode Island. He's from Cranston. Rams into New Hampshire territory as they change plays. Cooper is next to Harris in the gun. Settles on the grip, but he's ripped down. Well, there is the man who got encroachment on the last play, makes up for it on this play, Brian Carter. 
redshirt freshman out of Florida. UNH has been able to recruit kind of more widely around the country with this string of success that they had recently. And, you know, Carter's one of these guys, comes all the way up here to New Hampshire, had a really good camp, earned himself some playing time, and right there teamed up with Ryan Sosnack, defensive tackle we've already mentioned, to bring down Harris for the first sack of the game for the Wildcats. Carter truly stepping up with the absence of Josh Kenya on the defensive end, as well as Kyle Reiser out due to a preseason injury. They'll go to Cooper. He is a weapon in this conference. Skitters out of bounds before getting plowed by the New Hampshire secondary. It was Marquise Carr making the tackle right there, but it was really safety. Rick Ellison did a great job stringing that play out, using his speed. Ellison, here we go. Here's a kid from California. So UNH, like we just talked about, recruiting from all over the country, but Ellison was a track star in California. Showed us that speed right there chasing the shifty Cooper out of bounds or towards the boundary where Marquise Carr could finish him off. Rancho Santa Margarita, the home of the <laughs> sophomore Ellison. That's a fun word to say, yeah, fun town to say. <laughs> third and 12, no third down conversion yet for Rhode Island. Harris looking to sling it to Parker, he dropped it. Wow, just a little bit too much air under that ball. It was a lot of fighting going on there at the end between Harris and DeAndre Drummond Myrie. It looked to me, uh, be, excuse me, between Parker and DeAndre Drummond Myrie, the New Hampshire safety who had coverage back there. And it was a pretty nice, uh, it looked to me like Parker kind of pushed off at the last second, tried to separate for the ball, but Harris came back. He's got a hand up in between Parker's hands. They play by the New Hampshire defense. Parker's already caught a 50 yard plus touchdown from his new quarterback this year, Tyler Harris. <laughs> Has that ability, one of the top pocket passers in his recruiting class back in 2014 when he was at Central Florida. Harris got tons of attention from SEC schools like Alabama, Ole Miss was the school that he narrowed his decision down, but playing time was something he had in mind with Central Florida. We'll have more on that as the game unfolds. I heard he also uh, kind of fell in love with those Rhode Island beaches. I don't know, somebody, somebody gave me a little note about that. Hard not to, right? I mean, why not? Why not go to Kingston? Well, today, not a bad beach day. Hope you're joining <laughs> us, though. By the pool or on the beach. And it might be fall, but it certainly feels like it. Feels like summer still. Another great punt by Satchel Denton. This kid is definitely a weapon, and he's been everything is advertised. All right, we will step aside. It's 8 nothing New Hampshire on top of Rhode Island. Trevor Knight in the offense will have it back in Durham when we return. The power of local, it's the faces that make us smile and the places we love to go. The businesses that make us special, the things that make us proud and the needs we can't ignore. The power of local is making our own decisions, knowing the back way home and finding a new way forward. It gives us our character and energy and makes us better. Every day we're here. Kenny Bunk Savings, the power of local. Unifirst handles the ongoing year in and year out details of all that goes into uniform program management. Quick and accurate delivery, bottom line value, and unparalleled service and customer satisfaction. All designed to empower you and your employees to project the best business image possible. With DD Perks, you get upgrades like speeding past the line with on-the-go ordering and a free beverage when you join. And that upgrade feeling really stays upgrade. with you. Upgrade. Because with DD Perks, you can keep moving, upgrade, and stop waiting. The more points you earn, the more free beverages you get. Upgrade. And free always feels good. Experience the upgrade effect with DD Perks. Download the Dunkin' app and enroll today. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources and powering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. 
We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. New Hampshire's offense set to take back over after failing on fourth down their previous drive. There's wide receiver Rory Donovan just getting looked at by head football trainer Sidney Mishu. We'll see how Trevor Knight adjusts. He'll have Neil O'Connor out there with Malik Love and Evan Gray, the sophomore running back alongside. The give is to Gray, just escapes the end zone. Only a pickup of one or two yards. Gray just, it looked like Raiz Johnson in there for Rhode Island. Almost got Gray in the end zone for safety. New Hampshire knew they had to run the ball. They tried to do it out of a spread formation, four wide receivers. Raiz Johnson, 54 for Rhode Island. He played offensive line all of last year, a transitional piece for Jim Fleming's defense, as well as his defensive coordinator, Pete Pextus. This time Gray escapes for more yards and cuts the marker in half. See a little misdirection counter running play right there and I think New Hampshire is realizing they're going to have a hard time just lining up and going toe to toe with this big physical URI defensive line. So in order to get that running game going it may have to be some more counters just some other kind of misdirections maybe look for a little option. Ah, and here we see our first look at redshirt freshman Deontay Chapman in the backfield for the Wildcats. Chapman went for six rushes, 107 yards against Holy Cross last week. He's in pass coverage now, and over the middle to O'Connor incomplete. And for the second time, it was a turnover the previous drive, but New Hampshire has to punt it away back to Rhode Island. It's a big three and out for the Rhode Island defense, see if they can give their offense a little bit of better field position. We try to, you know, that way Harris can open things up. We saw him go for the end zone deep on the last time. Does it feel like Coach McDonald's forcing the run a little bit? He did make it a point to get it in, but so far the passing game has really helped New Hampshire move the chains. It feels like it may be a little bit. Coach Cardi calling the plays right next to us. You know, I think they were probably hands tied a little bit, right, being against the goal line right there. Pednoff a booming kick to the 40. And this is Ross who tries to wiggle free, but not doing that right now. Well, so much for the good field <laughs> position for the Rhode Island offense. Pednoff kind of had a shaky pawn in his first one, but man, under pressure right there, he really boomed it and impressed. I, you know, I, I could, John DeCaro laid a big hit on Ross right there, and I don't know how he kind of, man, he did not go down. Great job keeping his feet. Didn't gain any yards keeping his feet nonetheless. Quinlan Dean helping out the tight end on special teams to bring down Ross, who got pancaked back on the gridiron. So Harris and the Rams offense return. Just 81 total yards for URI to this point. Three wide for Harris. He'll fake the give, or pardon, fake the throw and give it to the handyman Cooper, two-time captain from New Haven, Connecticut. Last week against Holy Cross, New Hampshire defensive line did not do a great job in its gap assignments, kind of slipped out of gaps, allowed the Holy Cross running backs to find some big lanes that time right there. Even, the, even with the fake pass from Harris, the D UNH defensive line stayed in their gaps, stayed home, did their jobs, only gave up one yard on first down. Cooper to this point, five rush, 23 yards, averaging just about four and a half yards a carry. Parker the man in motion, instead it's flipped up in the air, nearly picked off. But Michael Balsamo right there, he is, close. he, he is going to be thinking about that one for a long time. He had touchdown in his eyes. I don't. Harris must not have seen it because he literally threw it to Balsamo. We already talked about it. This is a guy who's a former safety. He should be making those catches. He's not your average linebacker. He's a former defensive back. Just moved up to linebacker this year. And, man, he's going to be kicking himself for that one. Yeah, Bouvet was the intended target on the out route. URI has yet to convert on third down, 0 for 4. Harris sees the pressure coming and complete. Well, that time Balsamo wasn't dropping into coverage. Instead, he was just coming straight after Harris. No need to catch any balls right there. And, you are, uh, UNH defensive coordinator John Lyons has shown a lot of blitz so far in this game. I think it's one of the things that has kept URI over on third downs. Lyons in his seventh season, a former head coach of Dartmouth for 12 years. Big green in action up the road against those Holy Cross Crusaders tonight. 
between John Lyons and Coach McDonald. They have coached a lot of fo college football in New England. Well, McDonald, 25 years with the program, 17 as head coach, five as the offensive coordinator. They just got the punt away. That was the freshman, Denton. Kind of a low snap. Denton did a good job just to get it off. Donald Goodrich, that UNH captain, was in there. Couldn't quite get a hand on it. 8-0 New Hampshire lead. The football back after a near collapse by URI on special teams. We'll be back for more CAA football on ESPN. H's offense, 164 total yards. You'd think they have more than eight points on the board, but a failure here on fourth down on their second to last drive, and on the previous, a failed third down. Knight looking for O'Connor, tried to sandwich a pass in there. Yeah, we saw, you know, O'Connor was open on that play, and it was just short yardage on that fourth down, but URI coming up with some big stops to kind of the old Ben not break cliche on defense for the Rams. Wildcats at the 36. It's the freshman, Turner. They faked it to him. They go up the middle, though, with Trevor Knight keeping it. A flag on the play. But once again, we see UNH try to run the ball with a little misdirection, right? Get the, bring the receiver out of the backfield in motion, fake it to him, run Knight up the middle. But if the offensive line is going to keep holding, it's going to make it awful hard for these Wildcats to run the ball. And not just misdirection, also consider Turner not often used in these spots. I had to look up his number. I'll be honest with you. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> number seven? Turner used in the kick return game. He had three returns against Holy Cross a week ago. First and 20, a 10-yard penalty on New Hampshire. I'm not sure if you caught it, Tim, or what the ruling was there. Knight back to throw after the hold. Looking for breathing room, he'll take off. Tez Wilson, number two, chased him out of bounds. And it's just an amazing job. Coach Fleming on the CAA media conference call on Monday called, referred to him as Houdini, and we saw a little Houdini action right there by Trevor. Looked like four guys were surrounding him, and he was able to use that quick feet, that athletic ability, sidestep, and you know, good decision making. Just take the six yards. Set up a second down. Don't try to force the ball in it anywhere. Rhode Island head coach Jim Fleming used to be a coach at Akron. He had to coach against Julian Edelman, and he thought that was a task. He compares Trevor Knight with similar ability. It is Chapman, the redshirt freshman from Houston, who had the give. Still third down and long for the Wildcats. Tez Wilson once again in on the tackle right there. Nice job coming down the line, taking care of Chapman. Wilson, a junior from Alexandria, Virginia. He shifted to defensive end last year. He played a lot more linebacker. He admits everything moves faster, which is just a great observation. Sometimes you think, well, you play defense, it's going to move the same speed all the time. Knight on third and 12, darts over the middle. O'Connor, full extension to give New Hampshire a chance to move into Rhode Island territory. Nice play design right there by the Wildcats. Took advantage of Rhode Island. It was... Ezra Holmes, the linebacker who was in coverage on O'Connor, and Holmes kind of patted his chest out. You can see it right here maybe on the replay, saying, yeah, I, I couldn't cover him. I couldn't stay with him. I do not think you want to have a linebacker covering Neil O'Connor. That cannot be the game plan for Coach Fleming. He was a very good defensive mind. That's O'Connor's fourth catch, 45 yards. This is Chapman once more. Richard Freshman getting his opportunity. I'll tell you what, though, you mentioned that failed coverage by the front seven of URI. They have to respect the mobility of Trevor Knight as well. Yeah, absolutely. You kind of have to leave a guy right there to, to try to keep an eye to spy on Trevor Knight. We just saw UNH try is the same counterplay. We saw them gain some yards with down on, deep in their own end. But this URI defense, not only they're physical, but they're learning quickly, did not fall for the counteraction on that play. No gain on the previous run. An empty backfield for Knight. Little throw over the middle, it's Malone Woods, nope, O'Connor, who got wrestled after streaking out inside the 30. Well, sometimes it really is a benefit to sit right next to the uh, coaches here for UNH because before Knight even threw that ball, Coach Cardi was saying, perfect, perfect. So it was the right play call. URI came in a blitz. They had a good, perfect play call on it. That's why O'Connor ended up wide open again all by himself over the middle. And you know Rhode Island does not want to do that. It's not part of their game plan to leave O'Connor open. Had to gang tackle the big receiver. O'Connor 190. Knight will throw once more. It's O'Connor. Inside the 10. 
Really, again, a nice play design and well executed by Trevor Knight. You're going to watch. He, it's a play action, but it, it's a play action like that he's going to run the ball. So he kind of fakes it, then fakes like he's going to run and is really getting a great rhythm. A nice run pass option right there. And O'Connor just finding seams all over the place in the, against this Rhode Island defense. O'Connor, a former quarterback in high school at Lemonster High, was the Mass Gatorade Player of the Year at one point. He's got six receptions, 86 yards. Knight looking to throw again. Ball tipped up in the air, a dangerous play. And they'll get second down. It was Brandon Gennetti got his hands on that one, and UNH definitely dodges a bullet. Up there where was, uh, you know, really a bunch of Rams in the back of the end zone near that ball, but just kind of landed out of harm's way. Great play by Gennetti, who has one quarterback hit on the season. Had a QB hurry against Harvard. A big win for the Rams. First ever over the Crimson. Second and goal and even six minutes left in the first half. It's love in motion. Knight, the keeper. He fooled everybody there. Takes off into the end zone for a New Hampshire touchdown. Yeah, show that running ability, that athletic ability of Trevor Knight. But once again, second time in the last three plays that was really execution on the play action. I got faked out as well. I thought I thought Evan Gray had the ball. I was that's who I was watching. All of a sudden, it's Trevor Knight going into the end zone. So you know, great job by Knight with his ball handling ability right there. Get the Wildcats in the end zone for a second time. Well, Gray is such a weapon because he serves as that decoy. He's 228, and if he really needed to, there he could have provided the extra block. <laughs> it's Pednov for the extra point, and it is good. Number 16, New Hampshire, on top 15 to nothing on fellow CAA opponent and New England rival Rhode Island. We'll step aside. You're watching ESPN College Football. Four-yard scoring drive for number 16, New Hampshire, to put another seven on the board. Neil O'Connor, the highlight, Tim. Neil O'Connor, three uh, pat catches on that drive for a total of 60 yards. O'Connor was finding seams all over the place and get a little bit of yardage after the catch, as we can see on that last one. Developing in a nice rapport with his classmate, Trevor Knight. And O'Connor was the big name coming in, preseason all-CAA player, and so far so good. He came into this game leading the CAA in touchdown receptions with four. No touchdowns for Neil today, but he's averaging almost 15 yards a catch. Kick is away by UNH. And it's Cooper, the versatile weapon. Spins off one tackle and not getting much after that. Finally got wrestled to the floor. Oh, Donald Goodrich, great job right there. Goodrich broke down in open field facing Harold Cooper on a kickoff. I don't think a lot of guys are looking forward to that kind of task, but Goodrich is more than up for it. Broke down, was able to make the tackle and make the hit initially. Cooper kind of escaped. Goodrich got him down anyways. Senior captain doing his job on special teams after kind of a spotty special teams last week for the Wildcats. Yeah, Goodrich has just one rush, one yard. URI still 0 for 5 on third down and just 82 yards of total offense. Harris, the quarterback, completing less than 50% of his passes. He's in the gun with Cooper in motion. They go the bubble screen route. Cooper gets a block from his tight end, but fails to use it. And New Hampshire's defense comes up to make the stop. That was Isaiah Perkins, the initial stop, sophomore corner. I like the call right there from Rhode Island. You need to get Harris on track, need to get him a little bit of rhythm, feeling good about himself, and why not use Harold Cooper to do that? Just, no, no, actually, they had to move the ball up a little bit, so pick up a five yards there on the first down. Good way to start this drive. I'd like to see the Rams air it out a little bit more. It's Cooper's second reception to go along with 23 rushing yards. The give to number one. Bulldozes a couple of tackles. That was Quinlan Dean, who initially came in on some contact. Let's get their backup running back in there. Anderson taking the ball. Cooper goes out of back, went left after that first play. Pretty good one-two punch for the Rams. Anderson and Cooper, but not much depth behind those two today. Anderson's got two rush, 16 yards. In the flat, Parker will whisk free for a few more. Parker, third reception. 
just under 40 yards for the day. Parker's got a touchdown catch in five straight and in six of Rhode Island's last seven. Love those first three plays from the Rams. Get the play, get the ball to your big play guys. Use your big offensive line. Do what you do best. 21-yard drive thus far on three plays. They air it out once more to Coulter. Coulter bursting free, drags some defenders with him. Just outside the number. And the last man to get him was, looked like Aiden Brown, a redshirt freshman from Quincy. And Prince Smith Jr. over there too, the cornerback on the far side. Yep, Rams Clint. going a little bit of hurry up here. Just two more yards on that pickup, but enough for the first. Harris to throw again, but completely airmails this throw to Coulter. Well, I like, I like the fact that they were going to go right back to it. Make the UNH defense tackle on the edges. See if they can stop your guys in the perimeter. You have these big, big, uh, strong, wide receivers. Let them do what they do and see if New Hampshire can stop it. And, you know, so far it's been a quick move up the field for the Rams on this drive. Harris got a little, little anxious on that throw. He did. Airmailed it. Harris, number 12 pocket passer back in 2014, a transfer from UCF. He earned the starting job. It literally came down to the final moments of the team's final preseason scrimmage. Airing it out over the middle, nearly intercepted. Very close play. That was Pop Lacey. Pop Lacey, true freshman last year, led the team in tackles. Been a little bit quieter this year, but man, oh man, a good beat on the ball in this one. Ooh. Show some acrobatic ability trying to get in front of it without making the pass, without pass interference. Lacey a season ago, all CAA third team, and here's third down, a struggle today for the Rams, 0 for 5 in this spot. We'll see UNH has blitzed the Rams a lot on third down. Let's see if they come with it again. Not showing it, but that doesn't mean the Wildcats won't come. Aaron Parker on the far side, a quick whistle. I think Rhode Island just took a timeout. The Rams will indeed talk it over. Yeah, and you know, I think it's a good timeout from Coach Fleming. As we've been harping on, they haven't converted a third down. You know, you, and you have to, some of that ha, some of that has to be on the play calling. You know, UNH has been coming with the blitz, and you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready to, okay, if they come with the blitz, who's your guy you're going to dump it off to? And if they don't come with it, where are you going to go deep? Here's the play. Nearly, Lacey had nearly an interception. The intended receiver. Kyrie Denny. Denny was, hadn't even turned around yet. He wasn't even in any position to fight Pop Lacey for that ball. There's Tyler Harris anchoring this offense. Offensive coordinator Will Fleming, the son of head coach Jim Fleming. Three years of FBS experience, a chance to really put the team that was 2-9 and nine last year and really flip the switch and flip that record around to give them a chance these next two years. But well, as Coach Fleming said, three years of FBF's experience, but he never started a game for them. So he's still learning. He's still learning at the collegiate level. Harris recruited by Scott Leary, former head coach. And he aired it out this time. There's Pop Lacey. Give him an interception now. Cooper, the running back, has to bring him down at the 20. How about that? Pop Lacey gets try number two and he converts. Well, after having to work really hard to try to get that first interception, of that was almost thrown to him. He kind of caught that one over his shoulder again. We saw Harris overthrow uh, a pass on the sideline. And this one he way overthrows once again, airmails his receiver. Pop Lacey does a good job kind of keeping, <laughs> actually Quinlan Dean almost knocked it out of the air in front of Pop. Great name, Pop Lacey. The leading tackler a season ago, sophomore from Reading, Pennsylvania. That's his first real impact play on the defense. 14 total tackles coming in. That's the third different defensive back with an interception for New Hampshire. And they'll give to Gray with under four minutes left in the first half. New Hampshire was one of the best teams at the FCS level at taking the ball away last year. They're a playmaking defense, and they've kind of picked up this year right where they left off last season, really able to ball hawk and make plays to either prevent touchdowns, prevent scores, or give, the, give their offense the ball back always. For Harris, that is interception number nine this year. Throw to Malik Love, toying with the defenders, and... Barely reaches out for a couple of more. Big impact today for Rhode Island. Kadir Brown, a redshirt freshman, number 26. He's getting a lot more action. Haven't seen a ton of DJ Stewart. 
the free safety. Coming up under three minutes left. New Hampshire looking to run the clock out. They get the football to start the second half. Rhode Island won the toss and chose to keep it. Evan Gray up the gut once more. Well, this was one of the three keys for the New Hampshire offense. Not only protect the football and protect Trevor Knight, but get some yardage on the ground. UNH up over 50 yards rushing, up over 200 yards passing. It's second and seven. Knight wants to take off. And well, I think we've, pick seen, up a five. we've seen the results of that dedication to the ground game in the last couple of drives. New Hampshire receivers have been very open. Neil O'Connor on those three catches we showed you, uh, he was very open. Malik Love on that last one, five yards open. If they're going to leave guys like that open, Trevor Knight will be able to find them all day. And I think part of it's because they've been running the ball. Justin Hogan brought down Knight there, third down and three. We've hit two minutes left in the first half. Near side receiver O'Connor. Knight looking his way. Instead, he goes to the redshirt freshman Chapman. He's given this team a spark offensively. He is showing something, no doubt about it. Again, a kid from Texas that not, you know, 10 years ago, there was nobody from California, Florida, or Texas coming to New Hampshire, but able to uh, recruit players from all over the country now. And Chapman looked like he wasn't ready for the body. I thought it was just going to hit him in the hip or something. Last second, he stuck his hands out, was able to pull it in for the big first down. Chapman again, over 100 yards rushing against Holy Cross last week. He also had the longest UNH run since 2014, most by a running back since 2013. Meanwhile, O'Connor keeps racking up the catches. That's number seven, up over 90 yards receiving. Once again, these Rhode Island defensive backs giving a lot of space to the UNH receivers and Trevor Knight taking full advantage. Wildcats to the 35, empty set for Knight. Looking downfield, he'll go in the air, but not enough on that throw. Well, that was one of those receivers, Nick Lubisher, who we talked about, these guys, four, five, and six receivers who are needing to step up. And Lubisher actually did a really nice job kind of improvising his route. He went into open space, made a cut into open space, but maybe we'll see it right as he makes the cut. He kind of slips. Oh, maybe at, right after he made the cut. But it was a decent job by Lubisher kind of improvising with his quarterback Knight to try to give him a target as he scrambled. Man in coverage, Mamadou Mbai. Lubisher has yet to make a catch this year. This time Knight's play action he did give to the big man Donald Goodrich. That's carry number two for Goodrich. Just over one yard rushing. It's Raice Johnson, former offensive lineman, once again on the tackle. Tackle for a loss right there. And it was that same counter play the U UNH tried to run and fooled the Rams once, but did not fool them the last two times. John McDonald, the former offensive coordinator of this program, it seems like light years ago, <laughs> takes the time out. He's in year 17 as the head coach. We've talked about Ryan Carney. He's in his 11th season with the program, sixth as the offensive coordinator. You look back, I'm sure the goal each and every game, he set a really high standard last year in the first round of the FCS playoffs, up over 600 yards of total offense against Lehigh, 64 points. Anytime this team doesn't score 30, it's a disappointment. Well, kind of when New Hampshire was making its name back in the early 2000s with guys like Ricky Santos and David Ball, they were over 50 points. And, you know, and another guy by the name of Chip Kelly who was running that offense, that's kind of what this place became known as, is, was offense you. And, you know, we're going to spread you out and hurry it up and score lots of points quick. It's slowed down a little bit here, but they've still got that potential. UNH, 280 total yards. Knight fumbles the snap, has to make something out of nothing. Ran out of room. And the man to get him was Tez Wilson, the defensive end for Rhode Island. Rice Johnson back there as well. And it looked like Trevor was just kind of looking downfield when the ball was snapped, went right through his hands. And look, they're right back on the line. I think they were saying, look, this is two down, four down territory no matter what, which kind of made sense where they were before. But sure. I wonder if Coach McDonald changes his mind now and says, you know what, we're going to punt this thing. Now we just lost three more yards. I think that might be the wise move with a, 15 to nothing lead here in just 41. Oh, he's going to maybe take a penalty. We're almost at halftime. A fast second quarter here. Coming here up. In Durham. Yeah, sorry, Tim. Coming up, 10th play of the drive. But they might punt, as you mentioned. Pednoff might be called upon here as Sean McDonald's out on the turf now. And Tim nailed it. Wildcats 
take the delay of game penalty. Yeah, with a lead, I think you're smart to do that. You know, kind of going back to the conversation we were just having, Brendan, back when they were scoring all those points, they would, you know, they could beat a team by 30 points and lose the time of possession battle by 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because they just played so fast. Today, and I think we're seeing, they're able to kind of, maybe one of the reasons why Rhode Island is laying off the receivers, I think the Rams are a little bit tired out there. UNH has had the ball for 18 minutes, uh, Rhode Island for about 11 minutes in this first half. So, you know, this UNH offense has been on the field a lot. They've been converting on first downs. They've been running the ball. And the Rhode Island defense honestly has looked a little bit tired, a little bit gassed, uh, just because they've had to play so much football. And that's the reason why they're backing off, giving that little bit of cushion. But you know, that was big, I think, for the Rams. If they had given up another score right there, going to halftime, three scores down, with the way this series has been between these two, UNH has won six straight and 12 of the last 13, and some of them have been close, but a lot of them have been blowouts. I think that was a pretty big stand right there for the, the Rams. And once again, it was that defensive line, that front seven, and how hard they play. And that's what we heard all week. It's how hard these guys play, and they have really shown it here today on homecoming in Durham. And on the counter side for Rhode Island, it's a why not us mentality as they try to rebuild this program looking for a winning season since 2001. Jim Fleming said, hey, we're a team from New England. We're in the CAA. We are CAA worthy. we yeah, got to take it to these guys. Remember, two years ago, Rhode Island was up 17 nothing. Not on this field because it's brand new, but right in Durham, they had the lead going into halftime. And, and last year it was an eight-point game in the fourth quarter until UNH kind of you know made a couple nice plays at the end of that game. So these teams aren't that separated. I also like what Coach Fleming said, the why not us playing on that. If New Hampshire can do it, why can't we? And I think he's right. It's still just a two-score game, and New Hampshire lets the clock bleed out, and the Wildcats will take a 15-point lead into halftime. It is halftime in Durham, homecoming Saturday, still a beautiful afternoon in New Hampshire. The Wildcats protecting home thus far, up 15-0 on the Rams of Rhode Island. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources, empowering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. With DD Perks, you get upgrades like speeding past the line with on-the-go ordering and a free beverage when you join. And that upgrade feeling really stays upgrade. with you. Upgrade. Because with DD Perks, you can keep moving, upgrade, and stop waiting. The more points you earn, the more free beverages you get. Upgrade. And free always feels good. Experience the upgrade effect with DD Perks. Download the Dunkin' app and enroll today. Hi, I'm Tim Wakefield. As a two-time world champion, I know a great team when I see one. That's why I'm excited to announce that Wentworth Douglas Hospital has joined the Massachusetts General Hospital family. Together, these award-winning hospitals will deliver a broader range of services, offering you and your loved ones access to some of the world's best medical expertise and care right here on the seacoast. Wentworth Douglas and Mass General, two award-winning hospitals, one great team, because two champions are better than one. Unifirst handles the ongoing year-in and year-out details of all that goes into uniform program management. Quick and accurate delivery, bottom line value, and unparalleled service and customer satisfaction. All designed to empower you and your employees to project the best business image possible. The power of local, it's the faces that make us smile and the places we love to go. The businesses that make us special, the things that make us proud and the needs we can't ignore. The power of local is making our own decisions, knowing the back way home and finding a new way forward. It gives us our character and energy and makes us better every day we're here. Kenny Bunk Savings, the power of local. You don't have to visit the University of New Hampshire to see what we do. 
You can see it in our state's coastline, in our farms and forests, and our towns and cities. This is where you'll see the things we do that touch the lives of people throughout the state. For 150 years, UNH has been proudly protecting our resources and powering the state's economy. We're more than a campus. We are the University of New Hampshire, the state's flagship research university. Two New England schools battling in Durham on homecoming Saturday for a Wildcat Nation. So far, UNH living it up for the home fans. Ahead 15 to nothing, and the total yards pretty much say it all. Rhode Island still trying to find a rhythm, Tim, on offense. Yeah, the big stat that jumps out at me right there, we've been talking about it all half, that 0 for 6 on third down. And, you know, some of that's on Tyler Harris. He hasn't made the throws he's needed to make. But I think some of that's on the coaching staff as well. They need to get them, put their players in better position to find those first downs. And, you know, let's give the UNH defense credit. They've done a great job sending the blitz. Coach, uh, defensive coordinator John Lyons has dialed it up at the right time, sent the right guys, and those Wildcats have made the plays when they're in the area. How about Sean McDonald? One of the keys he told us about was giving Trevor Knight proper protection. And when he has that, he can set his feet. He can take off and make the plays he needs to. 16 of 22 through the year, 229 passing and a touchdown. And I think the offensive line has looked better than it's looked in its first three games. Sure. They, they gave up a lot of pressure against Maine in the opener. Wasn't great uh, last week against Holy Cross. And, you know, look, and there, and there was a, a, an injury right before this game where Mike Masha was out, so Nick Belty has to come in. So, you know, these guys, they haven't been practicing together as a unit, and coaches all the time talk about that. As more than any position on a football team, the offensive line has to have time together as a unit, practicing together as a unit. It's almost like a golfer in a swing. You, guys, you have to do that every day. So when you bring in a new guy right out of the blue, look, has it been perfect for that UNH offensive line? No. Have they been helped by Trevor Knight's ability to be a pain in the butt, like Coach Fleming said, to be a Houdini, like Coach Fleming said? Absolutely. But... Knight has had more time, and you can see it in the stats. Like you said, 16 for 22, 229 yards in the first half. Not bad for the kid from Amherst, New Hampshire. New Hampshire just short of 300 total. They'll probably get it in the second half, 15 nothing, And we'll come back for more halftime coverage in Durham. Wildcat Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire. This stadium established just a year ago. And on homecoming last year, New Hampshire set a new record for attendance, close to 22,000 fans. They're hoping to do the same today. And so far, the home team has kept everybody around, leading 15 to nothing. Tim O'Sullivan alongside Brendan Glasheen. We thank you for joining us so far today. And we take a look at the two scoring plays for New Hampshire. First one to Rory Donovan rising in the end zone. Get to see right there, great block by Evan Gray on the edge to give Knight the time and an unbelievable catch by Rory Donovan getting that foot down. And here we see Knight, and we saw it a couple times on that drive. It was his ball handling ability, his ability to pull the ball in and then pull it out, faked out the cameraman, faked me out, <laughs> didn't fa it faked out the Rams defense, high-stepping into the end zone for Trevor Knight, the in-state kid coming in and second year as a starter. We always knew he could run, but th look at that. Threw for 229 yards as well as that rushing touchdown. The dual threat quarterback, that's why he's a pain in the tail for this Rhode Island defense. And you can't lose sight of how good Evan Gray's been. 22 in Navy today. He's been a great blocker for Trevor Knight to take off, and he's also been great blocking in pass coverage. You know, and he's had to carry the load. He's, you know, they've asked him to do some tough work running the ball. He's got nine carries, only 25 yards. He's been hit a lot. This is a physical Rhode Island defense, as we talked about. But Evan Gray has been willing to take that ball, willing to go up the middle and you know set things up. If you're just going to drop back and try to pass the ball and let Trevor Knight do everything for this offense, not going to work. We've seen we've seen that script a couple times at, at New Hampshire and uh, you know they can't do it. So nice job by I think coach Cardi sticking with that run game, making sure they don't go away from it too soon and then by and Trevor Knight to you know utilize the spaces that have been created by it. What's Rhode Island got to do differently offensively to get back in this one? Well, I like what they did with on that drive near the end of the second quarter where they were kind of throwing the quick passes the to the sideline, yep. the bubble screens, the wide receiver screens. Get, get, get the ball to Aaron Parker. Get the ball to Cooper. Those are the guys who are going to do it for you. And don't, don't put too much on Harris's shoulders. Like you said, talented kid, big kid, FBS experience, ton of potential. 
but keep it simple for him. Cooper just two catches. He's under 25 yards rushing. Halftime continues in Durham. Homecoming Saturday, New Hampshire ahead of Rhode Island. Number 16, New Hampshire on top of unranked Rhode Island. 15 to nothing. UNH is trying to go on to win on homecoming Saturday for the ninth straight year and also its seventh straight victory over the Rams of Rhode Island. We now dissect the keys for the Rams to get back in this game. We talked a little bit about the offense at Tyler Harris, just 9 of 19 through the air for 80 yards. A couple of home run balls almost connected. He had Parker deep earlier in the first. That time he's going to Coulter. Maybe simplify a little bit more, Tim. Yeah, I, I wanted him to simplify. I thought they kind of tried to do that with the bubble screens and the quick passes out to the sideline. But, you know, let's give some credit here to the UNH defense as well. This is a defense that last week gave up 367 passing yards to Peter Puyals in the Holy Cross offense. They were not happy after that performance. They were talking about this. we are better than that. We can cover better than that. We can pressure better than that. And you know what? They've shown it today. There haven't been a lot of openings for Harris to throw it down the field. And so that's why they've gone back to those check downs. So I think they need to keep doing that. And just like UNH went with a little misdirection in their running game, maybe we need to see that a little bit out of the URI passing game. I, you know, some kind of, if they have a trick play ready, they need something to kind of set this UNH defense off its rhythm. Because the Wildcats right now are feeling very comfortable against uh, the Rams they, with the over for 6 on third downs. and forcing Harris into all these incompletions. UNH feels good. I mean, you can see it in their, the, just the body language out there. So I think Rhode Island needs to just do something to throw you that UNH defense off its game because right now the Wildcats are strutting on D. Yeah, as Jim Fleming discussed, Trevor Knight, the mobility factor, he's a pain in the tail. He compared him to Julian Edelman when Fleming was coaching at Akron. He was coaching linebackers, and he was the defensive coordinator. Edelman, a standout for Kent State. Turns out Fleming ended up coaching at Kent State because he was getting <laughs> sick of him. Trevor Knight, a comparison to a Patriots All-Pro receiver. We'll see how Rhode Island responds down 15-0 to ESPN College Football. Action, New Hampshire 15, Rhode Island nothing. Third member of our crew, Jackie Mundry, with thoughts from Jim Fleming, the head coach of Rhode Island. I just talked to head coach Jim Fleming, and he was talking about the offense. He wants them to move past third down and make some more first downs. He said that they're making it to about midfield, but he wants them to take it a little bit further. Thank you, Jackie. Just six first downs for URI, Tim. And again, that big fat zero and third down over six. Think about it, though. You're over six on third down, and you're only two scores down. So Amazing Rhode Island's got to feel okay about things, that they're still in this game. They've got to kick it off. I mean, kind of stating the obvious here, but pretty big series for both teams to start the second half. But I'd say especially for this Rams defense. Well, you think back, too. Rhode Island, six interceptions on offense. They lose by just a field goal to FBS opponent Central Michigan to open up the season. Rhode Island started the game with the football. And the kickoff to C.J. Turner. He'll just kneel it for a touchback. He was back to return there. It's great. We can With see some of, the, uh, excuse me, some of the homecoming crowd here is now filling back into the stadium. The students have left their section. We'll, we'll keep an eye, see if they come back in. But people sitting on the, the, the burn, as they call it, over here. A little grass hillside in this beautiful new Wildcats stadium. Great day for homecoming for the Wildcats. And... So far, the football team's been putting on a pretty good show for this crowd. We're still waiting to hear an attendance figure. I don't know. We'll, I'm curious to see if they get close to the announced 22,000 they had last year. Yeah, just under 22,000 a season ago. Like you mentioned, they were hoping to get 22 to 23,000. Trevor Knight, 16 to 22 through the air in the first half. Can he match that in half number two? Third quarter is underway. The give to Evan Gray. Just like he we picks were, up a couple. Sorry, Brendan, excuse me. Just like we were talking about Evan Gray do, at halftime, doing the hard work, ran into Jose Duncan, it looked like to me, was in there in the tackle, coming down the line, making a play, and also uh, LB Mack. I found out that LB stands for Little Bill. I love that. Well, last year he I went by that. William Mack, number 98 for the Rhode Island Rams. Defensive end, a sophomore from Spring Valley, New York. Little Bill. Maybe he's a Bob, Co uh, Bill Cosby. Maybe a fan of him. There's the pass over the middle, incomplete, brings up third down at seven. I almost blanked on his name. I don't blame him. Not a bad name to forget these days. That's great coverage right there by 
uh, URI linebacker Kalani Kenny. You know, we saw Neil O'Connor running away from linebackers in the first half, and Kenny right there, awesome coverage on the wide receiver from New Hampshire, who's getting close to 100 yards receiving today. UNH four for eight on third down. Knight back to throw, trips himself up, and a big stop for the Rhode Island defense. Guess who, Jose Duncan putting the stop on Trevor Knight. At Brandon Gennetti there as well, and you know, we talked about it, that defensive line has been so huge for Rhode Island this year. And here they are coming up again when they need the stop. Let's not forget, last week after halftime, they shut out Harvard. And Harvard came back today with a 45 to 28 win over Brown. So we know that Crimson offense can score some points, but URI shut them out last week. Bryant also a win over Fordham. That's UNH's next opponent next Saturday night. Kicker goes down after the punt. A flag came out at the last second as Frimpong takes off with the football. Oh, it's Max Pedinoff, the UNH kicker. It's the second time. Oh. Wow. So Rhode Island comes up with a huge three and out to start the second half. And then on the, they, they force the punt. They do a pretty good job putting some pressure on them. They were going to get the ball on the, other, on the New Hampshire side of midfield. Instead, the big running into the kicker penalty. And UNH offense and Trevor Knight's going to be able to come right back out on the field. Now they're going to have the ball, looks like, around the 35-yard line. Oh, even closer to the 40, up to the 38. So let's see if that URI defense can kind of just keep its head up, keep at it, keep making some more plays. Yeah, that's the discipline Jim Fleming needed out of his team. That's a big play. Let's see how New Hampshire capitalizes. So they're at the 38-yard line, first and 10. Three wide for Knight. Back to throw, not moving just yet. Now he has to scatter. Gennetti nearly got him. Knight diving forward, he gets back to the original spot. You know, it's funny, that play ended up in a net gain, and I'd have to say it was really a great job by the UNH offensive line, giving Knight as much time as he got. Good job by the URI defensive backs covering for that long, and heck, great job by Gennetti to keep at it, keep that motor going, and we heard Gennetti described as a Viking before this game today. That was a Viking-like effort for the big defensive tackle number 99. Sophomore from East Haven, Connecticut. Stood out in the Harvard win. The fake pitch, nope, they do go to Chapman who checks back in. Redshirt freshman who went for over 100 yards a week ago in garbage time. A flag though late as we're two minutes into the third. And number 16 UNH, the lead will get the call. It was that guy we were just talking about, little Bill Mack, coming around the edge. And I thought that's what they were going to call, is because he was out of the, out of the, um, in between the tackles, away from the offensive line of scrimmage. That was tight end John DeCaro going too low on the block. So now UNH moving themselves backwards. And going back to that roughing the kicker penalty, I and mean, that's the kind of play that programs that traditionally struggle seems to find them right you get it you get it you have a nice series you feel like maybe you get things going back your own way and a penalty knocks you back Hank Johns today's referee so a long second down for New Hampshire 276 total yards steps up and throws second reception for Justin Malone Woods the sophomore from San Diego reaches forward to get to the 35. Happened to be watching Malone Woods as he ran that pass pattern. Did a nice job kind of going, making a cut to his right. And he made it really lazy, almost like he wasn't even going out for a pass. And then quickly cut back to his left to get open. Nice job by the young tight end to find some space. Sean McDonald, head coach of New Hampshire, he's so right. When Trevor Knight settles his feet, he looks so much more comfortable. Can still take off, but big difference in the footwork. He's settled this time as well over the middle, O'Connor! Dragged down inside the 30. Neil O'Connor up over 100 yards. Well, that was one of those where O'Connor was so wide open. You almost, you'd think Trevor Knight probably got a little nervous even th throwing that ball. <laughs> Man, if you miss that, you're just kicking yourself. But nice job by Knight connecting with his favorite target, Neil O'Connor. Now we see the swinging gate formation from UNH. Knight looking downfield to the end zone. He's open, but incomplete. Just short to guess who, O'Connor. 
little variation. They call it the swinging gate here at New Hampshire where they line some linemen way out like he, they were a wide receiver. There was one lineman and two wide receivers on the far left on that play, and O'Connor got wide open. The URI defense wasn't quite sure what to do about it, though. I have to imagine it was scouted this week. It was looked out on film, but that formation opened things up for O'Connor. Knight just couldn't connect with him in the end zone. New season high, 136 yards. He fell just short of 100 a week ago. Goodrich the feed this time, running back with his third carry of the day. He's a captain for New Hampshire, and he's busted quickly by this Rhode Island front seven, headed by Mike Ezerike and Jose Duncan, 44 and 91. Yeah, and it was on that one. It was 98 once again. Little Bill has come out to play in the <laughs> second half. He said, "Nobody knows me by Willie at home. You got to call me LB." LB Mac the third. One and a half sacks coming into action. Third and eight. New Hampshire converted on its only for third down try in the quarter. Knight's got Goodrich on his left now after flip-flopping. And flag comes out. A procedure penalty. You know, we saw in that last play, Knight and Goodrich trying to mesh for the read option play. And they, they kind of bumped into each other. It wasn't very smooth. Ended up going for no gain. And, you know, that's one of the disadvantages of having a stable of running backs when you're trying to run that read option. Because the, the quarterback and the running back really have, need to have a great feel for each other. And, you know, when you keep moving running backs in and out, it's tough to develop that feel. And Goodrich hasn't seen a lot of action in the backfield today. Dane Heron, a junior with offsides. Knight, a bullet. O'Connor reels it in again. And I tell you what, O'Connor, really smart pattern right there, knew where the first down six was, got himself a yard in front of it, is able to pull it down, and huge pickup. I mean, when you, it's third and long, the other team knows you're gonna throw it, and you still complete it to your favorite receiver, you know that's a tough passing game to stop. O'Connor up to 151, his career high, just under 200 he had against James Madison a season ago. Nine catches, 13 targets. This time, Knight to the pistol. O'Connor joins him. Chapman, the running back. No, it's kept by Knight. He feeds, and O'Connor scooters into the end zone. I, I think it might have been a forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. I think so, too. Yeah, I don't think Knight realized quite where he was. <laughs> Tell you what, yeah. I couldn't believe that once they he, he scampered in there. Yeah. Oh, that definitely puts aside this homecoming crowd here in Durham. Let's look at it again here, Tim. Kept it a bit too long. Yeah, he knew he had O'Connor there. And again, a well-designed play, smart play to motion O'Connor in the backfield, have him be the option guy. And it was open early. If might have pitched it a half a second earlier, he wasn't beyond the line of scrimmage. So I think, you know, rather than taking a couple yards, take five, six yards, he, Knight was looking for the whole ball of wax right there cost him the penalty. Yeah, Sean McDonald, an offensive mind, but the trickery does not work for Trevor Knight and company on that play. Sean McDonald, the head coach in year 17. So back to second and nine. It is Chapman, the redshirt freshman, in the backfield. And this time, nothing doing. Knight bottled up. Tez Wilson right there. Again, smart assignment football. He had the quarterback. He stuck with the foot, stuck with the quarterback. And Wilson has really come to play today. We've said his name a number of times. So a long third down. Like we've talked about, Ryan Carty, the offensive coordinator, in the booth to our right here at Wildcat Stadium. Lubershire. The receiver wearing 31. He's the sophomore at the bottom of the screen. O'Connor, the wide man. Trevor Knight stepping up. He'll lob to Goodrich. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Rhode Island. And it looked like the man in the middle of this defense. Well done by the redshirt freshman. He's been all over the place today. Kadir Brown. We'll yeah. step aside. It's Rhode Island ball when we return. A turnover by Trevor Knight. And the New Hampshire offense, Rhode Island, is still hanging around. 15-0, the Wildcats lead. This is college football on ESPN. Exception thrown by Trevor Knight. 
and New Hampshire's offense this season. Second interception for the Rhode Island defense. And Tim, you just pointed out the keys to that defensive sequence. The man who tipped it, Tez Williams, the defensive end, and that set things up. Yeah, Tez Wilson's been awesome this game, and he totally created that interception. New quarterback in for Rhode Island, Juwan Johnson. Uh, excuse me, Lawson. Yep, Lawson, a uh, transfer as well for Rhode Island. They pulled Tyler Harris for the start of the second half. And Lawson came in in a similar situation last week against Harvard with Rhode Island's back against the goal line. He's more of the running quarterback. He can help get you out of these kind of situations. We expected to see Lawson today, and here he is right in the spot where we expected him. Lawson on the season, 11 of 19, 96 yards, a rushing touchdown against Stony Brook in the CAA opener for the Rams. A transfer from New Mexico. He ran the triple option. He keeps it on the fake to Cooper, airs it out for Kyrie Denny, incomplete. And third down once more, Rhode Island yet to convert in the spot. Quinlan Dean chasing down Lawson right there and forced the pass maybe a little bit high, but I'm sure that's one that Lawson would like back. He had Denny open in the flat, would have been a first down. Or excuse me, not in the flat, but out by the sideline. So Rhode Island making play, you know, hanging in there, hanging in there. They 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 survive the, the roughing the penalty kicker. They survive UNH being down in the red zone. They get a touchdown call back. You're getting all these chances, got to take advantage of that opportunity. And clearly offensive coordinator Will Fleming looking for a spark for this offense. Bouvet the motion man and a timeout for Sean McDonald and the New Hampshire defense. We'll keep it here. 8.40 left in the third. Tim O'Sullivan alongside. I'm Brendan Glasheen. Third member of the crew is Jackie Mundry. She's got a sense of the vibe of the New Hampshire sideline. The URI bench was explosive after that interception, and some of the players were yelling, the game is not over, and they were just really excited to get back in it. Thank you, Jackie. Stellar yeah. work down on the sidelines after a technical issue. You know, and it's kind of just what we were talking about, right? Like, you're, you're, you are still in it. You, it. It feels like UNH has outplayed you. UNH actually has outplayed you, but it's still just a two-score game. You've caught some breaks here in the second half. Time's running out on you a little bit, but, you know, look, quarter and a half left. <laughs> you're backed way up right now. I mean, glad to say they're still in it. I like it, but, man, they're in a tough spot. They need to come up with a play. You know, they've not been good on third down. Is the new quarterback the answer? They just got a timeout called to see if they can get the right thing out there. Let's see what the Rams got dialed up. The backup, Lawson, in the game for the starter, Tyler Harris. Third down and eight. Lawson to throw. And Bouvet makes the catch short of the marker. I believe that's Rick Ellison on the stop from Rancho Santa Margarita, California. And it is. They're going to be just short. Ooh, happy. And short. the punting team coming out. You have to punt. You know Coach Fleming's tempted to go for it. You can't punt it this deep in your own end zone. So nice job by the New Hampshire defense coming up with a play when they needed to make a play. It's been their hallmark last year been good at it again this year and once again Rhode Island can't get the job done on yeah, third down and one of the keys for coach Fleming coming in we got to stay in the moment really what would like to give it a chance but a potential roughing the kicker penalty this time against New Hampshire oh that is not a good play that was Chapman on special teams yeah and he knew it as soon as he did it disappointed in himself and Rhode Island gets yet another break Wow but in New Hampshire's case, as we see it again, the punter for Rhode Island, Satchel Denton, the end of UNH's drive turned into an interception after getting that circumstance to go their way. Let's see how Rhode Island responds to this opportunity. Yeah, you know, they've had opportunity after opportunity here in the second half. They, they need to do something. You know, I, I'm glad that they got, I'm glad that they're putting Lawson back out there. I mean, I think the offense has been sputtering. Hey, the URI offense didn't score in the second half either. So we should say, I mean, they're now on four plus quarters going without any points. So something needed to change for this Rams offense. Malik, uh, part, Harold Cooper on the carry after Lawson handed off. A little more about Lawson. He's from Petaluma, California. He actually went to the same high school as one of his defensive teammates. He went to the same high school as middle linebacker Miles Gardea of Rhode Island. Lawson transferred in from New Mexico and ran the triple option. More of a mobile guy, but 
one thing URI made clear, it was a tough decision at the end of training camp to decide to go on Harris to start. Right, so it's not a big drop-off going to your backup. This guy can play. Lawson can play. He didn't see much time last year with New Mexico. Airs it out on the bubble screen to Parker. Shakes and bakes forward over the 35. Parker, the man you're looking, Tim, to see fed more. Absolutely, and look, that was a pretty smart play by Lawson. He wanted to get rid of it earlier. Nice job by defensive end Brian Carter to get up in the passing lane, left his feet. Lawson, not a play that you would see a backup make, like calmly, no, I'm not going to throw it, I'm going to hold it. And then he got it out to Parker, sets up a third and short. Let's see, third and two. Can Rhode Island finally get off the schneid and convert a third down here? 0 for 7 today. Under 7 to play in the third, 15-0 New Hampshire. Loss in the give, Cooper. No. Gang tackled. And the Portsmouth native, Rick Holtz, initiated it all for the Wildcats. You know, they set their H back, Joey Kenny in motion. It almost kind of gave away where they were going to go. It was just a straight ahead, straight forward, kind of old fashioned, old school running play. And it's really just not going to get the job done against this UNH defense that is feeling good about itself and against a UNH defense that has two such solid, stout defensive tackles and Holton Sosnak. You can't run up the middle on these guys on third and short. The Rams enter today just 39% on third down. That clip is certainly heading downward after today. No mistake by the Wildcats special teams unit this time. And Evan Horn with the fair catch. The New Hampshire offense back out on the field when we return 6.02 left in the third and the number 16 team in the country in FCS holding off a conference foe in Rhode Island. They go to Jawan Lawson, a transfer from New Mexico. Sean McDonald's defense making the stops necessary to keep this one scoreless on the Rhode Island side. 15 zip New Hampshire. Trevor Knight with the football and the gun. Airs it out, Malik Love, diving, incomplete. Tim O'Sullivan's alongside. I'm Brendan Glasheen. Jackie Mundry has been manning the sidelines. Despite the 15-0 lead for New Hampshire, this kind of feels like an important drive for the Wildcats. They haven't been able to do much offensively in the second half. I mean, yes, they got down into the red zone, but it came away with nothing. And if they keep giving the ball back to Rhode Island, the Rams are going to, you know, this is the time where you put a team away. You know, Rhode Island feels like it's still in it. It's time for New Hampshire to make them feel like they're not in it anymore. Yeah, they scored the touchdown with 9.32 left in the second. Stagnant since. Pretty good cut there from Goodrich to make the first guy miss, but could not make the second man miss. It was Justin Hogan laying a big hit on Donald Goodrich. So once again, this Rams defense has forced the Wildcats into a third and long. Hogan, one of the leading tacklers, up over 20 for URI this year. Third down and seven. New Hampshire in this spot today, 50%, six for 12. They go three wide. And O'Connor, the outside man, far side. They go to him, but short. Knight only had eyes for O'Connor on that play, was locked on to his favorite guy right from the beginning. And Kadir, Kadir Brown, once again, we've been talking about him a lot. He did such a good job at the line of scrimmage with O'Connor, bumping him around, not allowing him to get that quick release. And O'Connor could never get to the first down marker. And I'm really impressed with this Rhode Island defense. I mean, they've been on the field a ton. They've been asked to do a lot. You're always, a lot is thrown at you when you face New Hampshire. And Rhode Island has handled it. Senior leadership, Jose Duncan, Mike Ezarica, Rike, excuse me, as well as Abdul Ibrahim. The punt by Pednov, fair catch by Matt Pyers. You mentioned a couple of those guys, Ezarike and Ibrahim, really kind of a neat story with those two. They ended up at URI after being in a program for sort of disadvantaged kids in Rhode Island and uh, in, in the general area. They got themselves into college through that program and now they're giving back and doing the same thing for some kids. It's kind of an awesome story and honestly it's those off the field thing. You need to have all of it to have a successful college football program. You got to have good people in your program to do stuff like that and so you know just one of the examples that URI, they're trying to, they are doing the right things to get themselves back on track. Yeah, Duncan and Ibrahim each had 30 prospective students of various socioeconomic backgrounds. They took summer, helped them with summer courses, life lessons, giving them advice. It was the program called Talent Development. 
And all of their kids completed the program over the summer, all enrolled at the University of Rhode Island. They've made Kingston their home. This time they give Lawson the trigger once more, handing it off. Yeah, the, the number 32, I gotta be honest with you, Brendan, I don't have a 32 on my roster that I'm looking at right now. Justice Antrim, a redshirt freshman from Hamden, Connecticut. We He's were told, not seen action yet this season. Yeah, excuse me. I'm glad you found that name. We were told we were really only going to see two running backs today from Rhode Island. So I, may, I don't know if somebody's hurt over there. They're just they're just trying something different. Cooper and Anderson, both seniors. That's Harris back in the game, and his strike to Parker. He takes off, escapes from Prince Smith, and he's into the end zone for a Rhode Island touchdown. Just what the Rams needed. Harris back in the game, and he finds his right hand man, Aaron Parker. Hey, maybe. Maybe Tyler Harris just needed a couple of series off, gather himself, catch his breath, realize, hey, I don't want to lose this starting job, but it was also a great play by Parker. Again, that's the guy you want to get the ball to. He had DeAndre Drummond Myrie in coverage and too much for a safety to try to cover that guy. And you're right, look, Rhode Island's been outplayed this entire afternoon, and here we are. It's a one-touchdown game with, you know, four minutes and a quarter of football left. Rhode Island is right in this thing. Carrick, the extra point is good. A 75-yard touchdown play. Tyler Harris to Aaron Parker, who, by the way, now has six straight games with a touchdown and a touchdown in seven of his last eight. We got a ball game, CAA football, UNH on top of Rhode Island. Tyler Harris back in the game. He took a series off, and they go to Aaron, to Aaron Parker for the touchdown, 75 yards. Parker still keeping that touchdown streak going. Six straight games with a TD and in seven of his last eight. Kickoff, it is C.J. Turner who gets mashed down inside the 20. A big hit by URI. Kalani Kennedy, linebacker down there with it. Like you said, the big hit going nice and low was not going to miss that tackle on Turner. And, you know, New Hampshire has been in control this game, had an opportunity maybe to put things away by making it a three-score game in the third quarter, but Rhode Island's gotten a few breaks, and finally, you know, they were able to capitalize his quick little slant to Parker, gets past his man, and he's gone. That's the, that's the big playmaker. That's the guy who's the, the touchdown scorer for this Rams team, and he was back at it once again. Let's see if Trevor Knight in the offense has an answer for New Hampshire. Knight will give to Chantum. Chap, uh, Ch uh, Chat Chapman, excuse me, the redshirt freshman who has seen a lot more action. They've mixed it up between Goodrich, Gray, and Chapman. That was his fourth carry. And it's just a pickup of three yards, so second down and seven. And how about Rhode Island, Tim, integrating a freshman running back? Justice Trantum. Knight the keeper, he'll shovel it off last second to Malik Love. And he bleeds forward for just a couple more, still. Well, that was the play that we saw them score the touchdown on. It was just to the opposite direction and with a different wide receiver. But Malik Love mo motions into the backfield and then they run option with him. Trevor Knight this time pitched it well before he got to the line of scrimmage. But again, and we've seen this Rhode Island defense. You fool them with a the play once, they learn it. Like, they were not fooled by that play this time. They did a good job getting on top of it. Third down and eight. New Hampshire under 50% on third down. Knight getting pressured, and he is sacked. I believe that was Tez Wilson again. He has been all over the place. It was his pressure that forced an interception. Now he comes up with a big sack on third down. To, you know, look, Rhode Island's got all the momentum right, momentum right now. They are just rolling with it. Defense has really kept them in this game. Now their offense is going to get the ball back in pretty good field position. Look, their returner is setting up right around the 50-yard line, even on the New Hampshire side of the 50-yard line. So Wildcats have been in control for this homecoming game, and you know the fans have maybe kind of filed out. Maybe they're looking for the party out in the field. Well, their Wildcats need them in here. Tez Wilson, second sack of the day, four tackles for a loss. Pyers attempting to return this one. He might have an angle. Whistles over the 45, and he's got little room to breathe after that as he's sent out of bounds. I'll tell you two what, minutes left in the third. It was a great uh, punt by Max Pedanoff there. We've seen he's been in the tight spot a couple of times where UNH has needed a kick, and he really came through with that one. But Pyers 
good job making the first guy miss, and it wasn't an easy guy. It was Quinlan Dean, their starting linebacker down there, and Pirates does a good job making him miss and then showing his speed by kind of outracing Donald Goodrich to the sideline. Goodrich eventually got him, but the Rams start with this ball in the New Hampshire 49-yard line, and they are in business. They got Tyler Harris back out there on the field. The offense has to be feeling a little bit better about themselves. First points in more than four quarters of action for Rhode Island. Denny Parker Bouvet bunched up in a triangle. The screen to Bouvet escapes trouble. Then he got dragged down by Pop Lacey at the very last moment at the 40. Look, and we're talking about it. These quick passes to the outside. Take advantage of the size that your receivers have. Let's see if New Hampshire can tackle you because, look, you miss one tackle, as we saw in that long touchdown. These guys are gone. And little bubble screen right there, great pickup on first down. Hey, look, second and two, you can pick up a first down here. You don't have to worry about your third down problems. It's the 4-2-5 defense for New Hampshire. Harris took a series off, then he fired a touchdown. This man's been quiet today. Harold Cooper out to the 35 of UNH. Cooper's numbers today, that was his eighth rush. Just under 30 yards on the ground. Two receptions for seven yards. I'm starting to get a little chippy out there, too. Big number 77, Derek Allen tackle, and Michael Balsamo going nose to nose, pushing and shoving each other a little bit. Well, can't, can't you just feel the vibe in the building? Absolutely. UNH is starting to get frustrated that they have not taken off and put their opponent away. Kenny, the tight end in motion. The give is to TJ Anderson. Back up to Cooper. He gets sandwiched, gang tackled by a couple of Navy jerseys. I tell you what, when Rhode Island has put Kenny in motion and then run behind him, it hasn't worked. They're no. kind of telegraphing where they're going to run the ball there. But, hey, maybe you run a little play action off of that now. You see that UNH is really reacting to the motion of that, that H-back. Run a little motion to that right like that. Play action to the right, come back to the left. Could have something. Harris 11 for 21. Redshirt Jr. has two years of eligibility left after transferring from UCF. Little out route, he hit Parker. Did he get over the line? He's still well short. Yes, yeah, Prince Smith Jr. out there forcing Bouvet out of bounds. That was Bouvet, okay. Oh, I, I think maybe we were both wrong on this one. It was... Uh, was it Kenny? 81, it was Isaiah Coulter. It was we'll Coulter. Get it. We'll get it one of these guys. Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, that was Coulter, 81, and we're at the end of the third quarter. Jim Fleming fired up, clapping his hands, pumping his chest, getting his players fired up. It'll be Rhode Island football to start the fourth. A one-possession game looks like last year all over again. New Hampshire leading 15-7. quarter, a one-score game. CAA in-region rivals. New Hampshire at number 16 in the country and Rhode Island. Tim O'Sullivan alongside. I'm Brendan Glasheen. Rhode Island still over on third down. Harris to throw. He goes to Cooper. Cooper streams outside. He gets the first. And Rhode Island can keep the chains moving. First, third down tonight, Tim. It's about time. Maybe took to the fourth quarter. First play <laughs> of the fourth quarter. But look, I like it. I like the play call. You get it to your guy. I thought it was kind of obvious actually what they were doing as soon as they put Cooper in motion. I thought, oh man, they're throwing the screen out to him there. UNH is going to sniff it out. But Wildcats actually looked a little confused on defense. They didn't have the right personnel out there to start with. So maybe Rhode Island took advantage of that confusion. Rhode Island has run 20 less plays than New Hampshire today, up to 240 yards total. Harris keeps it on the fake give to Cooper, falls forward just over the line of scrimmage. Nice job out there by the UNH defensive backs, Isaiah Perkins, Rick Ellison, and uh, I'm not sure who the third, fourth though was Pop Lacey out there. Did not fall for the play action. Uh, Harris, excuse me, was looking to go to the end zone with that ball, but those guys stayed home, stayed on their men, forced the URI quarterback to just have to run it. Four wide for Harris. The Central Florida transfer. Played under Scott Leary, of course, Central Florida made the transition to Scott Frost to start 2016. Harris back to throw, looking to the three wide set, instead goes over the middle, a dump off to, that is Coulter on the slant route. He's gonna be just shy of the first down, half a yard shy, so we're looking at third and about a half a yard here. Looks like Rhode Island wants to get to the line quickly. Let's see if they follow their big tight end, Joe Kenny. Quinlan Dean. Ooh, I, they might want to challenge that spotter. They might have another look at that. I, 
Sure looked like he got past the 20, but no, they're going to line up with it. Let's see where Joe Kenny goes and if they follow the, and if, if Cooper follows him. Third down and one, the QB sneak. Did Harris inch forward enough? That sure looked like he did. No sign yet from the officials. And there is a gang of white and navy. Harris did get it. Yeah, I mean, heck, if you have a quarterback that is six foot four, 225 pounds, <laughs> why not send him up the middle? What, what, what's going on here? Two third down conversions in under a minute or a couple of minutes here in the fourth quarter? It's amazing from Rhode Island. And Harris will say, you. who said I'm just a traditional pocket passer? <laughs> I can run a half a yard at a time. Well, today he still has minus three yards total. <laughs> Play clock is down to six. Harris has got to get it off. Bouvet, the receiver in motion. The give to Cooper. Mashes off a couple of offensive linemen. He'll drag into the end zone. A touchdown for the Rams. The Rams sideline just explodes after that run, kind of mimicking their coach, Fleming, who was all fired up after that, at the end of the third quarter there. And why not, for good reason, the Rams Coming back out, let's see. Now, it looks like they're going to kick the two. What do you think about this, Brendan? I, I, I usually am a, a surprising for, for, for kick, just taking the points, but, man. Carrick ready to line it up. The freshman has nailed all six of his extra points, including today, make it seven for seven. And it's a one-point game. Interesting decision yeah, by Jim Fleming and company. I mean, you go for two and you tie it. You, you don't go for two. What's the difference between being down two or one? We'll see how it all plays out. Still plenty of time. 12.40 left in regulation. New Hampshire hanging by a fingernail in CAA play. Senior, two-time captain, his first rushing touchdown of the season. And boy, does he like it. He did it in Durham, New Hampshire. His squad down just one. And we highlighted this in the open today, Tim, UNH 13 straight FCS playoff appearances, a big loss to Holy Cross as the number nine team in the country. UNH, that is, they beat FBS opponent Georgia Southern. You fall in this one, you're putting your chances really on the fine line to make the FCS playoffs. Yeah, play. I mean, look, you're going to make the F FCS playoffs if you only have two losses, but UNH has a lot of tough games coming up on this schedule, and they, they've got to be careful right here. They, they cannot afford to lose this game if they want to keep that streak alive. The man to handle the kickoff, C.J. Turner. That's his fourth time today. A nice burst over the 20, staying on his feet. And eventually, he falls forward. Yeah, Turner ran a long way. They're only going to get the ball in the 25, but that was a pretty nice running lane right there, and he made a couple guys miss. So Yeah, Akima Evans finally brought him down. UNH finds itself in a ball game and some pressure on this offensive. Oh, here we are. We're looking at it right here. It's... Uh, <laughs> displayed for us on the backside of Lundholm Gymnasium. It's across the field from the press box. We're looking at that. It's an impressive run of years and numbers. You think about it, it's crazy you know, how many different guys, different teams have been involved in that. The man who's been the, con the consistent one is Coach Sean McDonald. Oh, we should also note you started covering the CAA right when UNH's streak well. of 13 started. They'll hand to Turner, yeah. listed as a receiver, and he actually loses yardage on the play behind the line of scrimmage. We haven't seen Turner much this game. He showed some nice wiggle, some nice burst on that kickoff return. I like the idea of trying to get it to him. I like the idea of running another little misdirection running play. Just didn't work. This Rhode Island defense, you know, look, they're pitching a shutout here in the second half. How about Jim Fleming's defense? In his years at Central Florida as the defensive coordinator, he led them to the best pass-slash-scoring defense in Conference USA. Knight nearly tripped up, and what a play by Jose Duncan. Exploding to bring down Knight below the waist, and it's going to be third down and long again. And it was his uh, defensive line mate, Gennetti. This was the third down conversions for Rhode Island to set up their second score. Cooper bursting for number one, and here's the touchdown, or nope, the second third down. Here's the touchdown to Cooper, his first rushing touchdown of the season. After going 0 for 8, picking up two big third downs for Rhode Island on that touchdown drive. UNH has failed on its last four third downs. Knight feeling the pressure, throws over the middle, and he hits O'Connor. He can roam free. 10-5, touchdown, New Hampshire. That'll be a career high for Neil O'Connor. Big, chunky yardage and unbelievable play by New Hampshire on a third and long. 
Mike Ezerike was putting the pressure on Trevor Knight, but he hung in there, hung in there, got rid of him. 232 yards receiving for Neil O'Connor, a new career high. He breaks 196 he had a year ago. His 11 receptions tie a career high. He had those against Georgia Southern. Well, you and it. UNH needed to an answer, and that was about as loud of an answer as you can get for the Wildcats. Carrick with the extra point. So they beat Parker and Harris. Knight to O'Connor for not 75, but 76 yards. <laughs> and the missed tackle at the very last second. What a play. 22-14, still a one-score game in CAA action. New Hampshire leading Rhode Island on ESPN. Career day for Neil O'Connor, New Hampshire receiver, Lemonster native, recruited highly by both UNH and URI. He was a highly sought prospect, but UNH and the 232, as you can see, a new career high in receiving yards, Tim. He was a defensive back on the scout team when he first got to UNH. A typical, as you put it, a very typical Sean McDonald prospect. Brings him in at a different position and converts him into a receiver. They know what they're doing here. He's a weapon. <laughs> He's definitely a weapon. I, I like that. And Neil's grown the hair long for his junior year. Last year was short. <laughs> now he's got that. He's got the flow going. He's got. He's you know he's the preseason All CAA guy. A little more Hollywood this year for Neil. He's a junior. The long blonde locks going. Actually, he's a very humble kid and really a fun guy to talk to as well. And the Oops. ball fell off the tee. Morgan Elman gonna do that one over. There's a kid who came to UNH. It's a different in a different sport altogether. Morgan was a soccer player before. Uh, joining the football team he's in his senior season from scotch plains new jersey fans are getting into it i mean that talk about quelling the enthusiasm of the rhode island sideline 76 yards o'connor from trevor knight here's cooper who takes it to the 25 and he's rammed down around the 27 yard line maybe uh, maybe the 26 tackle there by Evan Horn there is a flag on the field but I thought that was in a break for Cooper right there and you know as we mentioned UNH had its trouble covering kickoffs last week it really cost them and would have been a bad spot to give up a long kickoff return just when you got the momentum back but Evan Horn the guy who's kind of learning on the fly to be a punt returner at the collegiate level also doing a good job on the kickoff coverage special teams but well, that penalty will push the Rams back and now they're down by eight and you know I get a wonder it's it's always a tough tricky decision go for one go for two I, I kind of thought coach Fleming should have gone for two after that last touchdown to try to tie it up and you know if you're coach McDonald you know why not go for two after your previous touchdown to make it a nine point game a two score game but they have an eight point game here in Durham three wide out far for Tyler Harris they give to Cooper surveys and just gets over the 20. By the way, hats off to Cooper. Needed 87 all-purpose yards today to give above 4,000. He did that. He becomes the ninth player in Rhode Island history to do so. He leaves the field and the tight end. They also make a swap at tight end. Kenny comes out and Tyler Burke, the Maryland transfer, checks in. TJ Anderson, the running back for Tyler Harris. Second and six for the Rams. Kenny in motion. We've talked about how that really hasn't helped all that much today. And a small hole for Anderson. Nothing doing. Sosnack and Holt, 71-72, per usual, anchoring the defensive line for New Hampshire. Interesting that R Rhode Island decides to stay on the ground here with these first two calls. And plenty of time left in the game, but I thought Harris had been kind of picking up a nice rhythm for himself. But he once again, maybe don't put too much on his play. Let's remember, this is just the fourth game he's ever started at the college level. Rhode Island's only got two third down conversions, but two in a row, two for 10 today. The give, nothing doing. Yeah, once again, this New Hampshire defense, it's really hard to run up the middle against on these guys in third and short, and it's like that time. Stephen Harper comes out from the bottom of the pile. Yeah, I had, a, I had to look up that number. I'm glad you got to it first. A redshirt freshman linebacker, and he's getting some playing time because Jared Keel, the starter, is on the sideline today in short, still handling that knee injury. So 
Harper comes up for, with a big play at a big time for the Wildcats. Yep. Middle linebacker by committee on that 4-2-5 defense for the Wildcats under John Lyons. Punt is away and taken down by Horn. He'll just get over midfield and he'll be down. We're coming up on nine minutes left in regulation. New Hampshire has the football back and an eight point lead on conference rival Rhode Island. You're watching CAA football on ESPN. 904 left in regulation. Tim O'Sullivan alongside. I'm Brendan Glasheen. So UNH gets the necessary stop on third down to halt Rhode Island. And the offense today, 414 total yards. Knight flips it over the middle. And it's caught by Goodrich. He's taking off. Duncan drags him from behind on the waist to prevent any more. But you start in a sense, Tim, that UNH can really put a nail in this game. Great call right there by Ryan Carty, the offensive coordinator, drops back to pass. You know that Rhode Island pass rush is eager to get back there, make a play, get a sack, put UNH off balance. Instead, the little you know, middle screen set up nicely and some sweet feet by Donald Goodrich right there to avoid a tackle and pick up a big chunk on first down. Pickup of 23 for Goodrich, by far his biggest play of the day. Knight seeing the nightfall coming. Roams away, hits Malik Love, makes one man miss. He'll weave to the other side of the end zone. He's in. A touchdown and a potential dagger for the Wildcats on homecoming. Well, I had to look over to Coach Jim Fleming at that one. He's got his arms crossed, one hand on his chin, and that was Trevor Knight being his Houdini best. I don't know how he got out of that. Oh, my goodness. What a great play, and Malik Love, good job going all the way back across the field, outrunning everybody. Good job by O'Connor, not to have a block in the back on him by, and man, the Wildcats look like the offense have stagnated in the second half, and boom, just like that, when they needed the points, they get the points. Malik Love earned all 24 of those yards, that's for sure. So did Trevor Knight. They dropped the snap. Lubisher, who took it, or did snap the ball, and it went down. Trevor Knight's the holder. He misplayed that sequence. Huh, and nice to see Trevor Knight get up off the field right there. He kind of got dragged down by him by, and it was an awkward tackle and just an awkward play all around. Glad nobody got hurt on it. And here's another look at the touchdown. So he moves off one. Uh, it, was, it, was <laughs> our guy, it was our guy LB Mack. Little Bill missed the sack on that one. Trevor Knight and Malik Love take advantage. And how about Mamadou Mbai, redshirt sophomore from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. He's one of their top corners. He was one of their pa uh, best pass breakers entering action. And they've attempted to punish him all day. So good field position. Turns out just two plays needed. The Goodrich uh, drop off. And then, of course, you go to Love. Yeah, and actually something I wanted to talk about, we had to go to break. Evan Horn, on the last punt, it was a short punt, the first one of the day from Satchel Denton and Evan Horn instead of dropping back and kind of letting it bounce and roll he came up fielded it in traffic not as a fair catch but kept going and gave New Hampshire good field I mean honestly that play by Horn could have been th a difference of 30 yards so a little play that probably won't go noticed in your in the box score or anything like that but it was a really smart play by Evan Horn who as we stated he's, he's learning on the fly he's learning how to be a punt returner at the collegiate level and I thought that was a really key moment for that drive for the Wildcats. And he's filling the void for two all-conference members that graduated Dalton Crossan and Casey DeAndrade. Harold Cooper on the return spins out of trouble and he'll mimic Malik Love except in the return game and go just outside the 30. Malik Love, the way he ran in for that touchdown, it sort of reminded me of a game of Pac-Man, just kind of getting ready to get, <laughs> just get yeah, bit absolutely. at. And he was scampering for life. But those the, the, the guys trailing him couldn't make up any ground. You kind of knew he was going to get in. He just kept it up on that angle. And good job, good job by, by Love. Looks like the hamstring that had been bothering him a little bit is all better now. Hey, let's note this. Rory Donovan caught a touchdown early in the first quarter. O'Connor and Love. Thankfully, Love is back in a situation where he can play a lot more as Love gets looked at, as I mentioned this. But uh, it looks like they're working on Love down there. I don't, it doesn't look like a hamstring, but. Well, all receivers today, with the exception of O'Connor, have had to get looked at. So 
as I just tried to make a positive note about the New Hampshire <laughs> wide receivers. Now, as great as New Hampshire has looked and, you know, able to answer with two quick touchdowns, there's still eight minutes left in this game. It's still a two-score game. We know Rhode Island has the ability to score quickly. So, you know, this is all of a sudden is coming to become a really exciting game. Points flying around, big plays flying around. Like this CAA action. Beat deep pass to Kyrie Denny, intercepted Isaiah Perkins. Well, I'll be anxious to look at the replay of that. I don't know if Perk got beat initially on that play and then was able to make up the difference, but a little too much air under that ball. Man, Kyrie Denny was all by himself down the field, and Isaiah Perkins makes up a ton of distance. It'll be hard to tell from this thing. Oh, he throws it pretty early. Man. That's interception number 10 for Harris in just the third game of the season. I think that goes, there's the, Fourth game. there's the inexperience. There's the collegiate inexperience, right? When you haven't seen college defenses, when you haven't gotten used to throwing against them in game situations, yeah, different. it's not the Scrim scout team. You no, know, it's not the scout right. team. It's not a scrimmage. It's different than going against your own guys. You know, you're going to get fooled sometimes. And look, at, you know, he, he's a talented kid. He's probably going to get better as the years go by, as the games go by. But he's had to pick his lump so far this season. So that's the second interception for Harris today on the drop snap by Knight. He tried to get it to Chapman at the very last second, and he takes the punishment instead. It's a big Viking. Janetti still playing hard. That defensive line from Rhode Island has been out there a long time. Let's take a look at the time of possession, see if we can get that for you. And looking at it here, Tim, about eight minutes more Yeah. for UNH. And it's about what it was the first half, so it's evened out a little bit in the second half. But over the course of a game, that, that, that will wear down a defensive line. Knights alone with 10 on the play clock. Steps up, ball gets knocked away momentarily. He's telling his receivers to go deep. It's Love who was just getting worked on incomplete. He had a, he was adamant about Love going deep. He didn't yeah, point he told once him. or twice. Like, hey, man. Get the heck down there. Get long. You know, we were just talking about it's 28 to 14. There's still eight minutes left. There's a lot of time left in this game. Wildcats believe that. They're, they're up by two scores, and they're going five wide, empty backfield. So they know this thing's done over. They're just trying to stay aggressive, not just looking to run out the clock. They've really attacked the right side corner. Mamadou and by again, the man targeted on that pass play by Trevor Knight. And we've got third down and 13. Goodrich breaks out. Knight, the keeper. No blocks. He'll take it himself and squirt forward up over the 35. Well, there, there was a little bit of a conservative play call right there for UNH. And, oh, you know, easy, a, a quarterback draw. Pick up a little yardage. Let the clock run a little bit. Send in Max Pettin off to kick. Now we're getting, there's still time for Rhode Island here. Still plenty of time to score two touchdowns, but you're getting up against it. You, you know, you're going to have to score quickly. You're going to have to get a stop. One of the things Jim Fleming, head coach of Rhode Island, highlighted the decision-making of Tyler Harris in the Harvard game. He went 12 of 19, 235, one touchdown. He also rushed one in for the Rams, but that was a big factor in why they were able to hold off the Crimson. But the decision-making hasn't been there today. Granted, as Evan Horn stalls the football down, Meanwhile, though, different situation when Rhode Island has to come back trailing in this game. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking as you were saying that, you know, it hasn't been some great decisions, but there's been a lot more pressure on them. I mean, last game against Harvard, the URI defense was kind of controlling that whole thing. They were, they were not behind. They were able to just hand the ball off. They weren't asking a lot of them. Now having to come back and, you know, look, Harvard's a very good team defending Ivy League champs. Shoot, been one of the best teams in New England. They're still not UNH. I mean, this UNH defense is a little more talented. It's going to ask more. It's going to, you know, be more of a challenge for a quarterback. And hey, look, you're going to have to chalk this up to a good learning experience for Tyler Harris, though. He's got 6:06 to make it something more than that. Dwayne Scott, the center, 55. You just saw on your screen. Harris back to throw, dumps to Cooper, nearly dropped it, and he drops himself down to the turf for just a short pickup. Under six minutes left. And for Rhode Island, you take out how well they've played New Hampshire the last three years. One score game going into the fourth quarter. That's been the MO of Jim Fleming's program. I mean, six of their 11 games last year, Rhode Island went two and nine last year. Going to the fourth quarter, either was ahead, tied, or trailing by seven points or less, and they only pulled out two wins. 
Harris going deep again. It's Coulter and Pop Lacey. Nope, was that Prince Smith? It might have been Pop. That was, that was Pop. It was a good call. Almost yeah. had his second pick. Yeah, and again, Harris almost just kind of threw that one up for grabs, sort of like he did on his last interception and, you know, just trying to make something happen. But, you know, he's got to remember that you, you still have time. You don't have to. There's not a 14-point play out there. You don't have to get it all back on one throw. You know, he really, he's lucky that Pop did not come up with that interception. It would have been the second of the game. Now, we told you how Jim Fleming used to be the defensive coordinator at Central Florida. Harris comes from Central Florida. They weren't there together. There was a coaching connection between Keegan Kennedy, offensive line coach for URI. He still kept in touch with some of the staff. Harris on the fumbled snap. He'll whistle it downfield at Bouvet. He makes the catch over the 50. The UNH is in a soft <laughs> oh. zone right there, and that's why Isaiah Perkins was trailing Bouvet, and he was looking for help over the top from Pop Lacey, but play was right on the sidelines. Pop couldn't get all the way over there. I think he was, I think Pop was a little shaken up on that misinterception. Kind of got taken down hard to the turf by Coulter, and he, yeah, he's coming off the field now, so. Yeah, he was wincing on that previous play when Harris I, I, threw I, it up for dear life. I think that made an impact. I think that's why he could not get over there on that play, and hey, Rams are in business. In New Hampshire territory, Cooper alongside Harris looking to throw, and he hits Bouvet once more. Cross route to the 40. Bouvet's had a good afternoon as we head into the evening on homecoming Saturday, almost 6.30 Eastern time. Bouvet's fourth catch to 70 yards receiving. Great job right there by Dino Boyd, the left tackle, blocking Juwan Horton. We talked about him at the top. I haven't mentioned his name too much. Boyd's done a good job on him on that left side. Boyd had a fun note in the preseason. Harris going deep to Parker, intercepted. And look, it's the same. It's it the, Perkins again. Yeah, and it was the same zone coverage on that side. Isaiah Perkins had underneath. Pop Lacey had over the top. This time, ball didn't have to travel as far, but Perkins was right there. Pop was over there as well. Yeah, and the Rhode Island offense just walking off the field in disarray. And back to your point, I mean... Yeah. Harris getting a chance to play, but there's three guys there for UNH. Yeah, th can just kind of once again throwing it up for grabs and hoping his guys will come down with it. UNH defenders almost like looked like they knew it was going to be an interception before Perkins ever came down with it. Well, body language is everything. You notice there on the screen, number 18, Bouvet, who caught the previous ball, he put his arms up in the air like, what is going on here? What are you doing, man? Harris, 11 interceptions. We're only in game four of the season. And these young UNH defensive backs, I mean, Perkins is just a sophomore. They'll hand off to the redshirt freshman again. He's been busy today. Deontay Chapman. And Perkins just a sophomore. He got some playing time last year as a redshirt freshman, but Pop Lacey played last year as a true freshman. Prince Smith Jr. was the uh, rookie defensive player of the year last year. Uh, Rick Ellison played as a freshman. I mean, all that, all that secondary is just sophomores, and they already have yep. all this experience. I mean, these guys are going to be unbelievable for the next three years. When they're all seniors, good luck throwing against this team. And another example of Sean McDonald flipping positions. Perkins was a standout running back and quarterback at Williamstown High School. He's from Williamstown, New Jersey. So he's got three interceptions on the season. Lacey got his first interception of the season today. Well, there's a guy here that came in as a wide receiver back when I first started covering this team back in, in New Hampshire in 2005, and they turned him into a defensive back, and he had just retired from the NFL, Corey Graham. He was a celebrated uh, offensive player, came here. They were kind of loaded at wide receiver. They said, you know what, this guy's such a good athlete, we're going to put him on the defensive side and had a 10-plus year uh, career in the NFL. So, you know, they just kind of take athletes. Coach McDonald loves to watch guys, if they're a basketball player, he loves to go watch them play basketball. Just how do they move in space? How sure. do their hips move? All that kind of stuff. And, you know, he just looks for athletic traits. Third and seven for Knight in the offense. Ground game again. Chapman, he gets dragged down. Nicely done by DJ Stewart. First we've called his name today. His number originally 11. He wanted to change it to 13. He asked that a year ago. He's from <laughs> Hartford, Connecticut. And a timeout. So a 14-point lead for New Hampshire. Once led 15-0. Rhode Island scored 14 unanswered. And then UNH took off. O'Connor with a monstrous day. And there he is, player of the game, presented by Kennebunk Savings. 
He ties a career high in receptions. And the yards a new career high, 232, impacted that from last year. He got 196 against James Madison. Also, give him a touchdown. O'Connor's got five. He's top five in the nation in FCS. It almost looks like a typo. 11 catches for 232 yards. That's an unbelievable average. Over oh, 20 yards. Only had Neil O'Connor on your fantasy team for tomorrow. <laughs> I know. I wish. And we got to see the nice long hair in that picture as well. The, yeah. uh, <laughs> Here are some of the looks at the, the receptions. Flow. And this is where Trevor Knight, again, he gets that, that extra that time. few seconds. Yeah, and I love how quiet his feet were on that last one. UNH to punt on fourth and five. A fair catch called by Matt Pyers, the freshman from Lincolndale, New York. And the clock stops at 2.45. Well, and hey, these are in-region rivals. This is the fourth longest tenured rivalry for Rhode Island, playing New Hampshire, 92nd meeting. Head coaches are starting to gain a little bit of more knowledge about each other. Jim Fleming in year four. Of course, Sean McDonald, 25 years with UNH, 17th as the head coach. They're friendly. They say they golf together, <laughs> except we're talking with Sean McDonald, he says, I said, what's the first thing you know about Jim Fleming? Well, we both stink at golf. <laughs> I say that to Jim Fleming. He says, well, he got that wrong. We're good at golf. We're the guys that don't play that aren't good at golf. Somebody's lying. Somebody's lying in that equation right there. The way Whoa, he what a grab. The way he actually said it, though, was we're the best guys at golf that don't play. That was Bouvet <laughs> who rose to the occasion. Bouvet's got a great frame. 6'4", 211. Local product from Cranston, Rhode Island. You know, he was named the most improved offensive player for Rhode Island after spring camp. So it's the fourth longest rivalry for Rhode Island, but it's the second for New Hampshire, only behind Maine. They played Maine more times, but Rhode Island's the second oldest uh, rival for these guys, the Wildcats. First meeting ever, 1905 for the two teams. Dish off to Cooper. Sees trouble coming in Quinlan D. Cooper says, stay away from me. Hits the B button for the spin move. Yep. And we're hitting the two-minute mark of the and, fourth and you know, quarter. And this, these are really important to Coach McDonald. This is He came here to New Hampshire. He's from Saratoga Springs originally, but came to New Hampshire, stayed in New Hampshire afterwards and coached high school football. He loves New England football. I mean, it was hard for him when Northeastern folded its program, when New England rivalry, you know, these this game, and obviously the main game's kind of the big one in New England, but these are really important to Coach Mack, and he gets that message to his team, and believe me, these kids follow their coach. They, they know how important this is, and it's, it becomes important to them to be the best football team in New England. So you know that it stung last week coming off that loss to Holy Cross. I mean, that's why they keep playing Holy Cross. They love these New England rivalries. So big bounce back here for UNH. They needed it. Thought the offense did a really great job kind of responding when they got down. They needed the points. Rhode Island had stolen the momentum in the second half, and New Hampshire offense answered, got the points. It was a good complimentary game, I thought. You know, the defense complimented the offense for New Hampshire and vice versa. So the Wildcats needed to win. We were talking about it. Hey, you lose a second game like this to another FCS opponent, it makes trying to get to the playoffs really hard. Your margin for error gets slim. Well, now they can feel good. They're back on track in this early part of their season schedule. They got Bryant coming here next week. They have to be feeling pretty good about themselves to the Wildcats. Denny tried to make the one-handed catch a second ago, coming up on 80 seconds left. And Jim Fleming's got a passion, too. He's from the Northeast, also from the New York City area. He's actually from New York City. Right. Most of his coaching staff from the MAC Conference. Ooh. And another near interception for <laughs> New Hampshire. That man <laughs> in the middle was Balsamo. He almost had an interception earlier in the game. Rick Ellison goes over and slaps him on the head. All Balsamo could do after that. Hands on his hips, hands on his knees. He's like, man, two, two passes right in my hands, and I've dropped them both. The former D Maybe he just doesn't get enough pass catching practice now that he's a linebacker. Sure. They do lots of that for the DBs, but not so much for the linebackers. Next up for Rhode Island, they are visiting Brown, who comes off a loss today to Harvard, right? I right. 45-28 yes, right. is 45-28, so Rhode Island, you know, they, feel, they probably would be feeling good going into that one next week against the Bears, though. Another. Harris airing Man. it out. Three. Jump ball again for Perkins and Pop Lacey. Both have interceptions today. The intended targets, Coulter and Kyrie Denny, number three. But I think that game next week for Rhode Island, that's one of the, you know, they're playing Brown, in-state rival. It's one of those where, you know, I, the old cliche, the throw, the throw the records out the window cliche, but I think that is pretty true for those two teams. Sure, certainly. You know, battle for the uh, Ocean State. 
Well, Jim Fleming, when he was the defensive coordinator at UCF, he had Blake Bortles at quarterback, helped his team get to the Fiesta Bowl in 2013, left to take this Rhode Island job. In year number four, he said to us on the phone that he hoped to be a year ahead, and right now he thinks they're a year behind on schedule, but they'll drop to two and two, or one and three, pardon me, on the season. Two and nine last year for the Rams, and New Hampshire, meanwhile, a bounce back effort, like you mentioned, Tim, as Coulter made that catch on fourth down. They do move the chain, so Rhode Island keeps the football. And How I about UNH and its success on homecoming? I mean, they get these fans to come out every year. 53-8 and eight after today at home since the start of 2007. It's an unbelievable record at home. You know, I, it, they, they call this place the dungeon. It's, it's a beautiful new stadium now. It used to not be so great, and, you know, the kids embrace that. They actually kind of liked that it was a little bit of a dungy place. And hence the dungeon you know they thought yeah come into our place try to play in these digs and we'll show you what it's all about you know what happens when you go to the dungeon and they, they embraced it they loved it and you know here's a kid Rick Holt who just makes that sack he was coming to these games as a kid I mean he yeah. he's part of it you know and that's why you know I want to say 10 or 15 years ago a talent like Rick Holt or some of these or Trevor Knight from New Hampshire they're not necessarily coming to UNH they're going to Boston College or they're going to other bigger schools in the sure. area and now top schools here at uh, the top high school players in this state in New Hampshire they want to come play at UNH. Rick Holt from Portsmouth one player Sean McDonald very complimentary of a timeout for the Rams with 58 seconds left by the way I want to shout out to Trevor Knight's father Scott Knight his <laughs> Nashua South Purple Panthers took down Nashua North last night 34-15 again we talked about Knight he's from Amherst but he makes the 11 mile journey to Nashua because his father was the head coach of the high school football team could have played with Jake Kennedy, the senior captain, the center, who went to Sauhegan High School in Hamhurst. Right, and we talked a little Nick Lorden, didn't get to play today, but another kid who played high school football in Nashua. At three different Gordon Amherst kids in three different high schools. Michael Balsamo, uh, <laughs> who, 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 ha who had the, Michael Balsamo had those two drop interceptions, but he did play a good day. Another New Hampshire kid, he played his high school football in Massachusetts uh, at a prep school, but you know, a lot, Great New Hampshire talent. You know what? It just it, that's great for this state. Gets the fans interested a little bit more when you have local kids who you can follow. And I go, I'll say it. Ivan Niamagaba, the third-string quarterback, and yeah. no, is everybody's <laughs> afraid to pronounce, but another New Hampshire kid. So here's Harris to throw on second and 19. Overthrows Kyrie. Denny once again. You know, and covering New Hampshire for all these years, I've gotten to see Rhode Island a lot. I've gotten to see them every year. And, I, you know, this score, they're, they're not going to end up winning this game, but this is as good as I've seen Rhode Island look in a long time. I mean, yeah. they are, their athletes are on the same level. They, they, they are not that far away. I, you know, like, they've lost seven straight games to New Hampshire now, but I got to tell you, it, it's really a fine line between winning and losing, as you were talking about. They were in so many fourth quarter games last year and they lose them all, you know, so when you see Coach Fleming's only got four wins in three seasons here, and that looks like a terrible record, and it's not a good record, and I'm sure it, it hurts him to hear about that. Cooper loses the football, and New Hampshire not only secures the pigskin, but secures the victory. Nice moment there for another senior captain, DeAndre Jump Drummond Myrie. And that harkens back to last year, actually. It was a fumble recovery return for a touchdown by Drummond Myrie, a captain, like you said, that sealed the win at Rhode Island last year, kind of made the final score what it was. Again, another game that was much closer than it looked like. So, you know, as tough as Rhode Island's record is, as these, you know, you start looking at these losses and they start looking ugly, they're not that far away. They really are only a few plays away here, a few plays there. And this is a, you know, this football team it has a different record. So I love the way that Rhode Island hung in the game. I love the way that they came back in the third quarter. You know, despite all the missed third down conversions, they stuck at it. Defense played hard the whole game. Just New Hampshire made a couple more plays, made a couple of big plays when they re really needed them. And you know, O'Connor was a big difference, but I thought Trevor Knight was awesome today. You know, he escaped when he needed to escape, and you know, I'm not sure his final stats, but you know, Trevor has really played pretty well this junior year. The fourth fumble, fourth turnover caused. Trevor Knight finishes 23 of 34. A new career high, 420 yards passing. Three touchdowns, one interception. New Hampshire is going to lock it up and take the victory. Number 16, UNH 28. 
and Rhode Island 14. UNH has won nine straight on homecoming Saturday, dating back to 2008. They also improved to 53 and eight at home since the start of 2007. Also, it's seventh straight win over Rhode Island. Jackie Mundry standing alongside the 17th year head coach of UNH, Sean McDonald. I'm out here with Coach McDonald after the team's win. So Neil O'Connor, he had a career high in receiving yards today. What was that like for the team? Big pickup, that huge. A bunch of third down passes and then a touchdown catch out behind the coverage. Great, great player, great kid, made some plays today. After last week's loss, how important was today to get back on track? It was huge. It was a CAA game. Now we've got an opportunity to be a 2-0 in CAA. Another home win for us. Just really proud of the way the kids bounce back. Awesome. Good game. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. A loss to Holy Cross by 25 points. They come back and get the win over a conference rival in Rhode Island. 28-14 to for New Hampshire. We just mentioned Trevor Knight's line, 23-34, of 34, 420 yards, three touchdowns on the ground. Evan Gray got 28 yards. As you look at the final package, I mean, UNH was really good on offense against Holy Cross last week. They mimicked that performance, and the defense stepped up. Absolutely. Great game from the defense. You know, when they last week they let guys run open down the field, they gave up big plays. Gave up a couple big plays. The one really to Parker was the biggest one, but I thought they did a much better job as Coach Max here at line, keep everybody inside and in front. They did that. Their eyes were in the right place. Another Coach Mack favorite. And they made the plays. They came up with the fourth down stop. They came up with all those third down stops. They came up with the interceptions. So the UNH defense making plays and the UNH offense, which the little stagnant there, all of a sudden exploded when it needed to explode. Yeah, they made some really explosive plays in the beginning of the first. And despite the third down number being lower, they found ways to make plays early on first and second down. One more time, Neil O'Connor was our player of the game. 11 receptions, 232 yards. The catches is a tie for a career high, the 232, a new career best for the Lemonster native. Well, that'll do it here from Wildcat Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire. Final score, New Hampshire 28, Rhode Island 14 for Tim O'Sullivan and Jackie Mundry, the rest of our crew, Ben Gilbert. Manning everyone back in studio. My name is Brendan Glasheen. We're saying so long from Wildcat Stadium. The final score, UNH, number 16 in the country. They get the win 28-14 over CAA rival Rhode Island, 28-14. All games airing on the ESP on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as log on to watchespn.com or download that great Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Thanks for joining us today in Durham. UNH gets the victory over Rhode Island.